uh, as we go into this thing, let me note two things. First, a sip. Ah, uh, second of all, because none of us have played in the new meta, none of us are really going to know exactly what's going on. This is primarily to be fun. However, I do want to note on a more serious uh, note that there are some pretty consistent themes that we've seen out of the big power cards. Oh, goodbye, Sheriff. First of all, the ability to get really large stats onto the board for inexpensive amounts of mana. These cards tend to be very powerful. Super simple example, Corridor Creeper. It was a vanilla 5-5 five five that cost seven and that price got reduced down. Um, we've also seen things that uh, the more circumstantial they are, the more like dependencies that they need. These cards tend to be a lot weaker. Oh, another great example of just getting stats out cheaply, Dr. Boom. Just a ton of damage and value, just out of playing the card down, stuff like that. We've also, oh, uh, we've also had a tendency to see that there's a lot of things that, uh, oh gosh, I keep remembering things that are just good vanilla value. Totem Golem, right? Um, the 3-4 that costs two with overload one, just good efficient stats getting them out early, right? Things that just get out, affect the board, bone mare, you play it, it's a four four and it buffs something with plus four, plus four and taunt, things like this. These have historically been some of the most powerful cards. Uh, things that are conditional, a little eh. This is kind of like one of the things that I'm in the tank about right now um, with any Hearthstone set, but also in the current meta for Hearthstone, which I actually haven't played that much of on stream as you have so seen, but uh, the meta is getting pretty impacted heavily by the existence of Baku and Gen Greymane, the ones that upgrade the hero powers. So I'm going to be thinking uh, quite a bit about how those affect those existing decks. And of course, the Togwoggle Druid that hurts people's lives and all that good jazz. Gonna wanna make sure to do that. First of all, I'm far too small for the vanity I seek to achieve in this. Ah, much better. All right, we're gonna be starting with the Druid cards. First of all, Ironhide Dire Horn, Overkill. Summon a 5-5 five, five Ironhide Runt. Pretty typically, uh, when I look at cards, I'm going to be trying to evaluate what deck it fits in a little bit more than if the card is good or not. Again, historically, some of those cards that just come down with good value, doesn't even matter what deck they're in. Corridor Creeper, when it was a 5-5, five, five, um, for seven, that's got, uh, cost got reduced per death on the field. That was in like every single deck because it was just free stats. This is a good opportunity for me to note for any of you who are tuning in who don't know what the overkill mechanic is. I'm going to be explaining what all the mechanics are in this game or in this set as they're coming out. I've been following the um, release. We're just kind of waiting for all the cards to come out before doing our reveal. Overkill is whenever you kill something for more than exact damage. So if it has three health and you deal three damage, it would not be overkill. If it had three health and you dealt four damage or five or six or... Huh, seven, oh! Um, then you would overkill it, deal more than the sufficient kill damage. And so a seven, seven that overkills to produce a five, five would almost universally be able to um, trigger the overkill effect. Now note, if you attack me, doesn't count. It has to be me attacking you. So when I look at this in a vacuum, Ah, there are some circumstances where it can function. There are some circumstances where, where this can function, right? Like if I play the Ironhide Dire Horn and I actually get to attack once, this is a 7-7 seven, seven and a 5-5 five, five for 7 mana that comes out slowly. Um, it does die to removal, but if we think about it, things like the Lich King die to removal, other a lot of our other big things um, that historically we've liked to play in the past die to removal. But I want to stress the difference between something like a Lich King, a Ragnaros, and a Ironhide Direhorn. This doesn't do anything to turn its play. It has to survive for a turn and then be able to do something. For instance, if I play an Ironhide Direhorn and you just crash two small creatures into it, you're S O F and L, right? So I, I think that. I'm, I'm a little on the fence. Intuitively, I want to give this zero stars. Make no mistake about it. I'm not going to be the guy that's going to go, I don't know, this could be kind of good. I'm going to actually explain what my whole evaluation of this is. I think this card is terrible. I think it's actually terrible. The circumstance in which it might I might change that opinion is if I look a little bit more in the set as we're going forward. And the, pull, the, the, the simple reason that it could have potential is that it's a lot of stats that can start affecting the board. Like if I have a taunt and this out, oh, good lord, we're going to start getting a whole lot of Ironhide runs. But doesn't taunt, 
it requires some defense to be able to play, and then it requires creatures to be on the board for me to be able to get value. I think too often against a control deck, this is just a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 that never gets to kill anything. Too often against an aggro deck, you play it and you never get to summon. The rest of the time, you're winning. So I, I, this seems like a zero to me. Uh, what, what scale are we on? Zero, amazing. Um, and I think those are the only two options that we really care about, right? All right, let's go on to the next one. I think... Uh, there we go. Now my, my keyboards work. Give your hero plus two attack this turn. Okay. Now, again, this one screams out to me. Give me a rating equal to my mana cost. Uh, is this actually that valuable? Here is a couple circumstances in which we should not throw this card away, right? When we look at this, what makes us want to scream zero? Things like claw. Give your hero plus two armor, plus two attack this turn for one mana. This doesn't get run, okay? It's a bad card. Bite. Give your hero plus four attack, plus four armor. It doesn't get run. But this looks an awful lot like backstab, doesn't it? This looks an awful lot like backstab, huh? Looks pretty good. Does Druid have enough card draw to make up for the fact that we'd be burning an entire card in our hand? Are you kidding me? Druid has everything. Druid is actually a class without weakness. That's why we're putting it in the number one slot. It's because it's the best class, not because it comes first alphabetically. Um, oh, and by the way, can we just give a shout out to the video editor at Day9 TV, Ed, aka Plankton, for building this slideshow? Uh, th th this is all Ed. So thank you, Ed. Ed, making me look good. I tend to have completely, I tend to have pretty much uh, Windows 3.1 quality. <laughs> a graphical influence here uh, coming from me. Anyways, yeah, no, I, I think that there there is some merit to the idea that this can immediately impact the board for free. Zero mana things tend to be never played or key cards, right? Innervate's a great example. Uh, Backstab's a great example. These, This is the kind of card that if you're in an aggro deck and you're against another aggro deck, if you get a pounce out, ooh, that's what allows you to secure board control. Because one of the big reasons an aggro deck can win out against another aggro deck is if I'm the one that's building the board out early. So I say have three creatures, and then you can play one. Yeah, maybe your one creature is pretty good, but I get to be the one that chooses how it trades. And that's so important to get that advantage in the matchup. So let's say you have two and I have two. If I can play a third creature and then play pounce and kill one of your creatures and then do that trade so that we're at the three on zero situation again, that's very, very nice. So I think that this 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 is something that makes me want to go, hey, could there be a nice aggro druid deck that exists? Could this be? Um, but it's plausible as a zero. Uh, it's plausible it's a zero. We might try it tomorrow when the set drops. Savage Striker, Battle Cry. Deal damage to an enemy minion equal to your hero's attack. Now, this is a card that I think is definitely weak. I think this card is absolutely spectacularly bad. Um, and I think that this is, this is a weird... This is a weird statement. Wait, the set doesn't drop till the 6th? Wait, what? Nostacons Rumble release date. Are you kidding me? No. Should it should be tomorrow? It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Oh my god, you lied to me, it's Arc Media 75. Alright, you're gonna get a timeout for that. Oh scaring me, man. Scaring me. Alright, anyways. So I, I think that this is this is not a good card. I think this is not a good card for the following reason. There's almost no other situations in which you're ever going to... Oh, shit, I forgot about a very key thing. I forgot about a very key thing. Um, the... Okay, here's here's my original reasoning. I gotta stop paying attention to what I was trying to do in chat. I'm gonna ignore that for now. The reason I think the Savage Striker is gonna be a weak card is because all the other cards that give you a good hero power thing sucks, right? Things like the um, Medivh's Valet is run in some mage decks. It's a 2-3 that deals 3 damage if you have a secret out. And some of those secrets are pretty good. But even Medivh's Valet only showed up in some decks, not all of them. I think that if Savage Striker wants to get to that 
critical amount of three damage. Three damage is about what would make me be like, yeah, nice, nice amount of damage. You know, you have your three damage Frostbolt, your three damage Dark Bombs, your three damage Quick Shots, a three damage uh, Medivh's Valet, a three damage Savage Striker is a good amount. When would this be possible? Well, maybe if I were a control deck that had already gotten Malfury and the Pestilent out. That plus the Death Knight makes it, I think, has some potential. But why the hell would you want to put two of these in there? Like, oh my god, I can't wait till I'm in a late game situation. I have Medivh out. <clears throat> Not Medivh. Why do I keep saying Medivh? It's because I was saying uh, Medivh's Valet. Um, the Death Knight, Malfurion. Oh, I get a, Mal a Malfurion the Pestilent out. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leverage that by getting a 2-3 out that deals 3 damage. I mean, okay, that's just not that great. I think the Savage Striker is way too niche, way too situational. Um, yeah, so how what makes Savage Striker a good card? If we're a Druid deck that has tons of things that power up our hero power all the time, and that sounds like a terrible deck, so I think this is a, this is a weak card. I think, I think this uh, all three of these cards come back to me. All three of these, Iron, Hide, Dire Horn, Pounce, Savage Striker, have been pretty underwhelming to me. This is the only one that I think has any merit. Predatory Instincts. Draw a beast from your deck, double its health. Slow! 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 Oh, this is actually a great comment from chat. What about Savage Striker plus Pounce? Don't these have a clear synergy? Kind of? I mean, it's just not that an amazing of a synergy. The fact that Pounce functions by itself is a lot better of a card than this Savage Striker. Yeah, I, I think that consistently, uh, the more I think about Savage Striker, I think it's a 0 out of 10 card. Uh, Predatory Instincts, draw a beast from your deck, double its health. Well, well, this is slow. Are there good beasts? No. Zero out of ten. Absolute zero. Not good. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, I, I, I can think of essentially no cards that would I would get fist pumpingly jazzed about. I mean, I guess. I guess the, you know, 24 health grizzly could be potentially neat. This is this it seems like a fun card though. This would kind of make me laugh. Yeah, no, people are pointing out the five mana 324. <laughs> The Witchwood Grizzly is the 312 taunt that says you lose health when you cast this, equal to the number of cards in your opponent's hand. Excuse me, kind of humorous, but I mean, th think about turn four. Think about turn four and five and six. If I'm a druid who's trying to pressure, playing something that just draws a card and then does nothing to a board completely botches my ability to, to draw pressure. So this would need to be done in some sort of controlish circumstance. Control versus aggro? I mean, maybe if I only had cheap beasts in there, if I wanted to go turn four predatory instincts, turn five, which would grizzly? Like, I'm thinking about it, again, in the process, not in a vacuum, thinking about it like what's on turn three, and then on turn four I do this, and then on turn five and six and seven, and what am I gonna do after I do this on turn four, something like that. So I don't think that on any sort of curve or to try to get something out quickly, does Predatory Instincts make sense? What about on the value side? I'm trying to get a Tarantus to be a 1224, and then when I get the 1224, I get to blah. Like, hmm? I actually think that the only merit Predatory Instincts has is that it's a kind of interesting deck thinner and drawer in a kind of taunt deck or not taunt deck, a ramp deck that's going to have huge creatures anyways. I'm going to be playing one creature a turn, and if I can't play one creature a turn, I draw with Predatory Instincts, guaranteeing that I get a little more value due to the fact that I delayed it. But uh, I'm not too hot on it. Spirit of the Raptor. Ah, yes. The, the, the totems, the spirits of the Loa. The way that this works is that each class has one of these totem-like dudes that's a 0-3, some small, cheap creature... They get stealth for a turn, and then um, has some sort of effect that's persistent. So stealth for one turn after your hero attacks and kills a minion, draw a card. What is this card doing at best? 
This card, to me, looks a lot like I am a novice engineer, maybe, right? Maybe, I can be a novice engineer. You can spend an entire card slot on me, and then if you kill something with the hero, then you get to draw once. How long is the Spirit of the Raptor gonna live? If it lives more than two turns, I mean, holy shit, that's amazing. I expect that the way it'll happen is you play this kind of later, like turn four, five, six. You play the Spirit of the Raptor, pop something and draw, and then the next turn you pop something again and draw. Um, but that feels kind of like stretching it. That seems kind of like stretching it. Spirit of the Raptor, at best, draws you two cards. Druid has so many ways to draw cards. Are you kidding me? This appears to be trying to play into this archetype we've been seeing hinted towards throughout this entire uh, set of Druid cards, which is, what about a Druid deck that uses the Druid's face smashing into enemies, and this is the way in which it correctly solves the meta. I just don't buy it. I, I don't buy that this exists. So I, I think this is another zero. Mark of the low. Choose one. Give a minion plus two, plus four, and taunt. Or summon two, three, two raptors. Huh. Now we did see that uh, priest card. Can't remember the name of it, but it was three mana. Give a creature plus two, plus four, and plus one spell damage. It has some similarity to... Um, has some similarity to um, the how long can this go on and feral dogs. Valen's chosen. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. You know, weirdly, I actually have positive feelings about this one. Like, the stat line seems weak, but let's think about the, the druid aggro decks that have existed historically and what their properties are. The historical druid aggro decks that work tend to put up a taunt or two, a big, thick taunt, you know, like the... Um, one six that gains a health every time you play a creature. Um, or the one five that's a three five when it's not your turn, the Tar Creeper. You play these very large defensive creatures, and then you kind of go wide with small peckers. <laughs> and I originally meant peck in that, like, because they all strike me as not dealing a lot of damage, just kind of pecking you to death. But when I say that Druid tends to go wide with a collection of small peckers, that sentence amuses me. So, Mark of the Loa, I feel like, interestingly, accomplishes both of those traditional aggro archetypes um, where if you don't draw one of those big taunters you have the ability to taunt or if you do have the taunts you can go wide um, part of me intuitively would say wouldn't you want the serenite chain gang isn't a bunch of two threes better two threes with taunt better than some three two raptors um, it's plausible however Mark of the Lotus, give all your creatures plus one, plus one. Power of the Wild, give all your creatures plus one, plus one. Uh, Savage Roar, things like that. I actually have pretty positive feelings about this. I think that there's 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 reasons for me to think that an aggro druid would be possible again. And I think this could be a, a, a card that sees some play. Stampeding Roar, summon a random beast from your hand and give it rush. No. No, not a chance. Not a chance in the world. Uh, when is this good? Obviously, the good circumstance would be I get to throw out a 10-mana creature like a Tyrannosaurus. How many huge beasts are there? Because this is the card that leverages having huge beasts. I mean, I can only think of a few. One of them is way back here at the start. The Ironhide Direhorn allows you to get out this 5-5 Ironhide Runt. But again, note that we're spending two cards. Okay, We are saying... Imagine if this said the following. Six mana and discard a card from your hand. Summon a random beast and give it rush. Or summon a large beast and give it rush. Everyone would be going, why does it make me discard a card from my hand? Ah, that's what, I mean, th this is what I see when I, when I look at this. I have to summon it from my hand. So I already am doing anti-card advantage. Um, and it's also a random beast. So if we're doing a deck that 
can leverage this. We're going to be wanting to put in a lot of beasts, so this might not have the consistency. This this seems like anti anti card value, um, anti card advantage. Excuse me, that's the phrase I'm looking for. Card advantage, by the way, is the idea of like I get more cards than you in the long run. And so if I've drawn 20 cards and you've drawn 12 cards, maybe I've been a little bit less efficient, but it doesn't matter if I'm inefficient. I can go one for one or even one for two against some of your stuff, but I have card advantage. So eventually you're gonna have zero cards and I might have four left over and that's how I win. Anti-card advantage are things like when Warlock cards discard. <laughs> Do something big and discard a card. Do something big and discard a card. We're basically spending two cards to have one thing. So it needs to be very, very, very good. Um, this is a Hadronox drawer. Not really. Not really. I mean, we already have the combo with Hadronox that we want. We play it for nine mana, we blow it up with a Naturalize. Would I ever want to get the Hadronox blown up earlier? No because I need to have a whole bunch of taunt shit die before I play it earlier. So the fact that I need 10 mana to do my Hadronox combo is not really that much of an inconvenience. Would I ever want to play the Stampeding Roar to summon the Hadronox so then it can crack into something so then I can naturalize it? I could, but I'm spending three cards to do the same thing that two cards are doing with the bonus that I get to deal three damage. So, uh, I think it's a Hadronox player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, there with you. Tree Speaker. Battle Cry. Transform your Treants into 5-5 five, five Ancients. Oh, fassa fucking nading. Whoa. What? Do you remember when Witchwood was like, guess what? We're going to summon Tree Ant Synergy, and no one ever heard of those cards ever again. Um, I think this card is fascinating. But let me let me very strongly emphasize where it does not exist. This does not help make a Tree Ant Synergy deck work, period. Because we can put two Tree Speakers into our deck. We have 28 Tree Ant cards, you know what I mean? This would be a combo piece. This would be a deck that, uh, like, the deck that immediately, I think, is the first one that I can at least have a through line connection to is the Tree Speaker in a Token Druid deck, right? We have Soul of the Forest, the four mana card that says, give everything Death Rattle, summon a 2-2 two, two Treant. So, you know, we, we have a normal deck. We have 26 cards that are just normal, token-y, summon-y, draw-y, defensive-y, these sorts of things. How do those decks tend to win? You summon a big board, and then you Savage or Blast in. Well, what if your board got cleared and then you just slam down a tree speaker and turn your two twos into five fives. It's another way to buff the board, which again is kind of consistent with how token decks uh, work. So I'm starting to say to myself, where are other circumstances where we might actually see a tree speaker? Let's think about the following one, right? Let's think about the following one. Outside of token decks, outside of token decks, how can we make this work? Well. We have Force of Nature, which is five mana, summon three 2-2 two, two tree ants, and then we can play the tree speaker. So now we have a 5-5, five, five, a 5-5, five, five, a 5-5, five, five, and a 4-4. Four, four. Isn't that a good board, huh? Isn't that good? Well, remember that Warlock has had a very similar card. Warlock has that card that it's like, it's like a 4-5, and if you have 10 mana crystals, you summon three of them. Right, so you get three four fives. See what I mean? That I, I can't remember the name of that card, but but the reason I can't remember it is because nobody runs it, right? Because it's just not good enough. Omega Agent, thank you everyone. Omega Agent, Omega Agent, Omega Agent. Warlock already has something that is a one card that makes three four fives. This is a two card combo that takes ten mana that makes four things, and so it's making me go. Eh. This is an interesting card. Here's the way I think of Tree Speaker. Maybe you run it as a one of in a deck that is incidentally, not deliberately trying to flood tree ants, but incidentally winds up with a board full of tree ants from a uh, forest, um, Soul of the Forest spell. So when I, when I look at Tree Speaker, I say bad. I say zero out of five. I think all, all of these uh, druid cards are pretty pretty unplayable. I think this last one I... Was there one back there? This this is the only one that actually gives me at least an inkling of a thing. Well, ah, maybe some could be here. 
All right. All right. War Druid Lothi. It is a three mana one two that says transform into one of Lothi's four dinosaur forms. Poisonous Stealth War Druid Lothi. One six Taunt War Druid Lothi. Four two Rush War Druid Lothi. Spell damage plus one War Druid Lothi. But yeah, it's good. It's a good card. I think it'll see a lot of play. I think this card's good. I think this card's good. Um, if for only one reason, this War Druid Lodi right here. This War Druid Lodi. Uh, the three mana, four two with Rush. Because you know what this says? This says pay three mana, deal four damage. Solid. It also has some um, no notable flexibility of being able to be taunt War Druid Lodi if we're up against an aggro deck and we really need it or we can throw down Poisonous Stealth War Druid Lodi and it's a way to deal with like a mountain giant um, the, the Fandral Staghelm is pretty hilarious where you can get a 4-6 taunt rush Poisonous Stealth spell damage plus one creature that's pretty that's pretty Lameo-ish I don't actually know how good that is I mean that honestly sounds kind of weak because again you're, you're having to play Fandral first Yeah, I, I think this is, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. Poisonous is any damage this deals kills. Except for heroes. All right, let's go on to the next one. Gonk the Raptor. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. Uh, zero, right? Zero. Zero. Zero, zero, zero. I think I think Gonk Gonk's a donk, right? He's total total donk card. Um, it's a seven mana four nine. What do we think about those stats? It's fine. Actually, it, it, I I kind of like things with a four damage stat line in Hearthstone. Just a nice amount of damage. Nine durability is a nice amount of durability. Like in, in a weird way, I really like the Primordial Drake, the four eight stat line more than the Mountain Giant eight eight stat line. You know, it, just, it feels good. Feels good. But let's look at the, that card text. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. Boy, let's evaluate the vanilla situation. I don't have anything to bust my hero power, so I just, I just flip a dude. Flip a doodle. Just do a one damage hero power. Here I come, pew, and I deal one damage. Then I go over here and I'm like, pew, deal one damage. I... Okay, what would make this really good? If I was running Bite, if I was spending four mana to become a four damage hero so I could kill a thing, kill a thing. Um, let us recall a card that I like. A card that I like. Do you guys remember this warrior card? Costs five mana. It's a three, four, and you may attack as many times in a turn as you want. In the class that gains a lot of armor, the warrior class. Remember this card? It's Fool's Bane. Love this card. Didn't really get run in anything. And Fool's Bane was a self-contained card, and it was five mana. So when I look at Gonk the Donk, and I look at its hero text, I'm like, okay, you're enabling something that another card took care of all by itself, and we need more conditions to it? No, 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 no. I think that this is I think this is not good. I think that overall, if we look at the druid cards, there's one playable-ish, two-ish playable card. Pounce, the zero mana, deal two damage. And weirdly, I think that that Mark of the Loa, get, give a thing plus two, plus four, and taunt, or summon some three, two raptors. Some something in that does something to me that feels good. Raw Tosh case says, Hero Power after Malfurion means a lot of three damage attacks, though. It does. It does, but it doesn't blow my mind. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's look at Baited Arrow. Baited Arrow. Five mana. Deal three damage. Overkill. Summon a 5-5 five, five Devil Sword. So, for comparison, we think about Flanking Strike. Very solid Hunter card. Flanking Strike is deal 3 damage to a minion and summon a 3-3 wolf. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that's weird. It's often a five mana deal three damage, which re remember is the common stat line for deal three damage is two mana. I'm a Frostbolt, deal three damage for two mana. Baited Arrow is five mana deal three damage, or five mana deal two damage, overkill, summon a five, five Devil Sword. Hmm. Ah, boy, does that not sound good. That actually sounds pretty terrible. What if there's a spell power hunter, right? Let's just try to just try to stretch our imaginations. What decks make spell power work? Decks with lots of draw. Very simple. Because anything that's more combo-y in nature, as in I play this card first and then I play this card second, um, when those are really good, th those only work when you are able to draw both those cards at the same time. Hunter has the worst draw of any class in Hearthstone as part of its class identity. So when I look at um, Baited Arrow, would it work if maybe we had like a Thalnos and we could like play it? No, no, not really. And if we're if we're in a situation where we're actually able to make Baited Arrow work, yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't feel that good. Uh, another comparative card would be Bane of Doom, which is five mana, deal two damage. If this kills it, summon a demon. Mm. The, the one thing that I'll note that's sort of quietly here is that it's deal three damage. Not deal three damage to a minion, deal three damage. Also, T. Sully, 87. Holy shit, happy 92 months in a row on Day 9 TV. Woo! Ooh, T. Sully, hot damn! You're at almost a hundred months. Can't wait. I can't wait. This channel is gonna be the first channel on Twitch that gets hundred year subs. Hundred year. The centennial. Hot damn, T. Sully. It's always great to see you. Anyways, Baited Arrow could plausibly be in an aggro deck as a way to just oomph its way through. Plausibly plausibly that's i think the only way in which i think this could work uh because some high end of aggro decks sometimes have just like a slightly different timbre to their high end just as like another here's a different type of problem for you to solve you know like the aggro hunters that just slam down some savannah high mains for sex you know um Maybe this could be something that could occasionally shoot you in the face for a little bit, a little bit of reach. And sometimes, if it's not reach that we need, we just need to blow up something in front. An aggro deck already has the tools to reduce something small and then blow it up. Headhunter's Hatchet. Two mana, two, two, battle cry. If you control a beast, gain plus one durability. An unbelievable card. This card is so good. I love this card. I love this card. Whoa! This is the best card we've seen so so far, man. This is an amazing card. Why? First of all, it's in the two mana slot. Um, the fact that... Um, I don't even want to talk about this. The ability to play in a hunter deck something that has repeated board dealy with um, you know it gets to attack twice over two turns or three times if you control a beast this is so good in an aggro hunter deck i love this card the fact that it can be a two three sometimes allowing you to punch in for more damage i mean already you have eagle horns bow that is run in decks that have no secrets as a reasonable card i think this is a very 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 nice card um I need to spend a little bit of time looking at and thinking about what are the hunter cards that cost three that are creatures. Obviously, you know, Animal Companion. <laughs> My favorite bear shark. Uh, but Headhunter's Hatchet. Ow. Mm. Headhunter's Hatchet seems to just fit pretty nicely in that two-drop slot because... Well, they actually already are kind of a lot of two-drop creatures. I still love this card. I'm still going to just keep saying I love this card. I love this card. There are a lot of options that drop early on <clears throat> that a hunter really struggles to deal with if they can't just keep clearing out the board and keep 
punching stuff down. This feels like a nice replacement for a candle shot in an aggro deck, but we haven't really seen that many aggro hunters. Plus, candle shot's a much more defensive card, it feels like. This is great. I actually think that this is going to help enable some face hunters. This is the best card we've seen so far, and I'm sticking to it. Best card in the game. There it is. Spring Paw! 1-1 one, one Rush. Battle Cry. Add a 1-1 one, one Lynx with Rush to your hand. Oh, that's interesting. Is the next slide our little thing? Nope. Huh. What an interesting little beast. So historically, we've seen that a lot of cards like this, where instead of summoning something on the field, those tend to be a little overpowered or completely underpowered. We've seen a lot of consistency out of cards that, uh, or I should say consistent play out of cards that you play a thing and it puts something in the hand that then you also have to play. Things that immediately come to mind is the Firefly. Oh my gosh, this all round, well balanced, nice card. And I actually like this as a design as well. The the card that gives you a little bit of extra room to do something. Especially when it's not random. So I also assume that that links at some of your hand is a beast. I, I think that this is a... I think this, this card's pretty fine. Let me think for a moment. There's not very many good one-drop beasts in Aggro Hunter, and they're kind of needed. And if you are in, like, if you play a 1-1 one, one beast, and then you play a Crackling Snapjaw to buff it, I mean, that's that's fantastic. Um, you know, you often wind up in situations where you just be playing a Jeweled Macaw, this 1-1 one, one beast that puts a random beast in the hand. Um... It's also really nice that it gives you another one mana card in your hand, because if you're an aggro hunter, a one mana card can help you smooth your curve out very, very nicely. Uh, the fact that it has rush has some merit, but most of it I'm actually thinking is just being a nice one mana card. I, I, I actually think this is a this is a pretty solid card. I actually really like this for aggro. I'm, I'm trying to remember what hunter cards are even still available in the one mana slot. Could this be for the Hunter Quest 2? I don't know, Dragon Roy 44. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to make that deck work. <laughs> I actually really like these two cards. I mean, especially in combination, you start to see that the obvious value it gets. There's like Dire Mole, Alley Cat, Spring Paw. I think would be really nice uh, as the 6 1 drops that would be in an aggro deck. Revenge of the Wild. Summon your beast that died this turn. Um. Whoa. Um. Ah, fuck, this has to have value somewhere. What a weird card. Here, here's the thing that's interesting about it. Let's think about this as an aggro deck card, right? If I have a bunch of three twos and one ones and two one beasts and I trade a bunch of things in and then I play Revenge of the Wild to re-get the board back. Even if I'm just losing a one one and a three two, clearing and then resummoning just those cards, that's good, right? Re imagine if Revenge of the Wild was just summon a three two beast. Imagine if that's all it was. You know, it's it's a raptor. It's a raptor. So if you can get it to just do a 1-1 one, one and a 3-2, then that's pretty good. So why would I not immediately say this is insane, right? Like, part of me when I saw this, I wanted to immediately blurt out, this is fucking insane, this card's broken, oh my god. <laughs> Blizzard is disregarding everything in their lives, and they're just trying to print broken cards for Hunter. Like, why would I say that? Um, Because I think it can be kind of circumstantially tough to guarantee that, and here's why. I am Hunter. I am Agro Hunter. What do I mostly do on my turn? I go face. So when do my beasts mostly die? On the enemy turn. That's the problem, right? Most of the time it ends on the enemy turn. When does a Hunter actually want to do trades? Well, typically if they're more mid-rangey, or if they're looking to just get a little bit of control, 
And then they go face, right? So Revenge of the Wild just does not seem suitable in an aggro deck. I think it just can't get run in aggro decks. Um, this absolutely gives some merit to a control deck. Like, I have Rexar. I play a big scary zombiest, it dies, and then I resummon the big scary zombiest and play another big scary zombiest. Um... <sighs> I, I actually want to say that this card is not that good. I, I actually think this card is not that good for the reason that it's very difficult for me to, the, to see the situations in which it can work. Because what I have to do, again, think about what you have to make work for this. I have to, on my turn, be able to get my beast to die. So I need things like charge with a Tundra Rhino, or what's going to happen in 90% of cases, they need to have just lived through a turn. And when are the times that I would have lived through a turn that will get this huge value if I want to trade or force a huge creature to die so that I can resummon it? Why am I not just going face? Why am I not going face, right? No, I think this card sucks. You know, no, I'm, I just think it sucks. I think this is a terrible card. I think it's not good. The only place in which I think it could maybe work is mid-range, maybe, but I actually think this card sucks due to the fact that the circumstances in which this text can function seems too difficult. Seems too difficult. I think you're just going to be going face with aggro. If you're an egg hunter, you're not running that many beasts or doing that many trades. You're going into face. I don't know. Blood Scalp Strategist, Battle Cry. If you have a weapon equipped, discover a spell. What an interesting card. Oh, this card's fascinating to me. This is, I think this is a beautiful card. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. Because, again, Hunter has some of the worst card draw in the game, but um, Blizzard ha has a very, uh, Blizzard, Hearthstone, well, actually this is true in other Blizzard titles as well, has a very soft partitioning of the class. It's very soft. It's not like this class draws cards and the others don't. This class has sweepers and the other don't. Every, every class has some sweepers, some card draw, some forms of healing in some way. Um, and, and this is a very interesting way to permit card draw. I think this is just a cleverly made card. I just think it's a cleverly made card. That's, that's how I'll evaluate it. Is it good, though? <clears throat> it seems okay. <clears throat> I think the, the secret reason why this is a good card is that Hunter has the best spells, man. Hunter's spells are insane. <coughs> the ability to discover is really nice. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'll, I'll actually say this is, this is going to be a playable. This is a playable card. This is nice. This is a playable little card. <clears throat> but it does only discover Hunter's spells. That's correct. <clears throat> Um, yeah, he's pretty solid. I mean, two fours, two fours, fine. Two fours is a fine stat line. Uh, it's nothing to like, you know, call home about. Mom, I have a two four, but you know, it's all right. Spirit of the Lynx, stealth for one turn. Whenever you summon a beast, give it a good old plus one plus one. Oh, Antelison, <clears throat> set Antelison. What do we think about the Spirit of the Lynx? It's at three mana. Stealth for one turn. Let's 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 break our analysis into two pieces. First of all, let's imagine we played this on three. What are we doing on turn four that's just causing us to backflip with joy? I mean, unleash the hounds in a one drop. You know, like aggro decks, maybe a pair of two drops. Would that have been better than just playing a solid three drop and then playing those same things the following turn? No, I think it would have been better to play the three drop. This this is exactly the sort of card that historically has been unbelievably weak. Um, these are cards that do deferred conditional value. If it's something like Keliseth, where you play it and it has deferred guaranteed value, we've seen Keliseth in the meta. It has existed. Spirit of the Lynx, deferred conditional value. I play this, and then later on, if I stay alive, I'll get to do stuff. These cards historically have been terrible, so I'm going to give this a 0 out of 5. It's just hard to keep things alive in Hearthstone. 
really, really hard to keep things alive in Hearthstone. Um, and again, I'll, I will base this statement upon the following. If I was going to play a pair of two drops on turn four, would I rather have played the Spirit of the Lynx on turn three? Or would I have rather played an Eagle Horn Bow on turn three? Or a large creature on turn three? What about the other half of the analysis? What if it was turn 10 and I have a bunch of mana and I play the Spirit of the Lynx? Then I actually conceivably could get some value out of it, right? Because I would maybe summon a pair of beasts that are big and then my turn would come back again and then the Spirit of the Lynx would lose stealth and then I play some more dudes. And then I get, I, I basically have given a large amount of things plus one, plus one. It sounds like a weaker Mark of the Lotus. Almost doesn't sound like a weaker Mark of the Lotus. I think it's a zero, zero out of 10 card. The Beast Within. Give a friendly beast plus one, plus one, then it attacks a, a random enemy minion. Oh! Huh! What do you think of the analysis so far? Is it good? I think I'm doing an okay job. I think I'm pretty right. Yeah, you're a good cat. You always support me. All right, come on. Yeah, yeah, get up there. Uh, give her friendly beast plus one plus one that attacks a random enemy minion. This card's God. I I need I need to think. I think this card's excellent. I think. I think this card's excellent. The reason being, you pay. It, it's. I'll explain why I'm going mm mm and exhaling a whole lot through my nose. Um, if there's some sort of more aggressive and mid range deck. The advantage that this provides is it's a way to kill a creature and then let my dude attack while still being able to play other cards. Aggro decks are in the mood to empty their hand very quickly. So for instance, um, suppose that I attacked with a 3-1 creature to the face and then beast within that 3-1 creature to clear the enemy that was there, it still gets some value out of hitting in the face. Like hell, you could even play a Wolf Rider that's a 3-1, hit in the face, beast within the Wolf Rider to crack something that has four to clear the board. Um, yeah, you're doing a good job. Oh God, you're such a good cat. The, the, th the reason I'm going eh, is that the obvious situation in which this is good, the obvious situation in which this is good, Wolfrider isn't a beast. Oh, well, that's stupid. I guess that's right. It's the rider. I think that's right. I think the Wolfrider is not a beast because it's the rider, not the wolf. Yeah, tuck your little head in there. That's okay. We we thought the Wolfrider was a beast, but we've made that mistake before. It's okay, baby cat. Yeah. All right. I need you up. All right. All right. The other cat who likes to chew on the headphones. We're going to move you away. You're going to got to move. That hurts so bad. Okay. The obvious circumstance in which this is good is if our opponent has something like a two health thing, a two power, or has a two power thing, and we have a three two, we can beast within to crack into it because our three two is now a four three, the four three lives and then gets to attack. Oh, that's good. I, I just think that there's not terribly many ways that we can cast it on one of our beasts that doesn't cause that beast to immediately die. But I, 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 it feels still plausible possible. Is your neck doing any better? Oh, it hurts a bit. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna exercise tonight. Just, just run a little bit and see if it feels better. That's fine. I think this card might be excellent. So it's some, something there that's tickling me. I'll at least want to check it out. Master's Call. Discover a minion in your deck. If all three are beasts, draw them all. Whoa. I, I it's it's hard for me not to feel like this is very good. 
it's hard it's hard to imagine them being not being anything but really good you know like I mean hell most aggro decks will have like six one drops eight two drops six three drops things like that um and if we also jam in some master's calls in there you know I'm imagining we're on like turn five and we're pretty much out we play master's call and then the next turn we can like play three dudes Seems very good in a mid-range deck that just keeps getting bigger, too. I think this is going to be better in uh, a mid-range deck instead of an aggro deck. Yeah, I think aggro would, instead of putting this in, just want more things that hit the face. Um, it's just such stupid value in any controllish mid range deck that can get there. I, I think this is going to be an excellent card. I don't really know where it fits, but I mean, it's just, it's just so obviously... Very good. Three mana, draw three cards. I mean, come on. You already have druids doing five mana, draw three cards. So, yeah. Zul Jin, cast all spells you've played this game, targets chosen randomly. Berserker throw, hero power, deal two damage. Holy shit, that's good. What the fuck? Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really good. Wow. All right. It's uh, Yogg Saron was good, and Yogg Saron didn't even have a hero power. And so this is controlled Yogg Saron. And you've heard me say this many, many times before. Hunters have the best cards. Hunters have just the best spells, best cards. They're insane because Hunter historically doesn't have good card draw. Um, goodness. Holy cow. Okay, this actually makes this card even better now. Because if we are a controlish hunter that's trying to take a little bit of time to get there master's call provides us the time to get there and the payoff is azul Jin. um wow yeah that's really amazing halazi the lynx fill your hand with one one lynxes that have rush what an interesting card fill your hand with one one lynxes that have rush This is obviously an automatic way to complete the quest. Um, let's think about this. God, this, this card does a lot. Like, the Hunter cards are way, way more interesting and much better than the Druid cards overall. Um, is this that good? The, the advantage that the Lynxes with Rush have is that they would be very good in a controlling context, right? We can distribute the damage exactly the way we want, and we have one card that is providing us. I don't even know how to evaluate this card. I have no idea. I, I think that this is going to... Th this card reminds me a lot of Ziliax. Not just because the stat line is similar. 5 mana, 3-2. Uh, but it's it's not this overpower... You don't, like, slam down a Ziliax on a naked board. And you're like, fuck, yes, we won, right? And I don't think Halazi will do that either. But um, I think it's actually pretty solid. I th I, I'm going to give this a solid. I don't think it's the best card in the set, as we've identified several things. But um, it's solid. All right, Arcanosaur, Battlecry. If you played an elemental last turn, deal three damage to all other minions. Um, is this card good? I don't, I don't, I don't really think so. I don't really, f I'm not really feeling this this card at all. Um, the reason being that like a lot of the, maybe I haven't played, maybe I have not played enough. Well, I'll just explain my thought process because that's what you're tuned in for. 
So when I look at Arcanosaur, I and it says if you played an elemental last turn, do some shit, my brain immediately goes, does this work an elemental mage? And it kind of does, it kind of does, but it also will hurt the rest of our board, and a lot of elemental mages are trying to do a good job to build their own damn board. Um, so Arcanosaur immediately makes me kind of go, whoa, are we screwing ourself over here? I mean, elemental decks want to play a lot of creatures out, huh? Well, where else could Arcanosaur actually be good? I, I think there might be enough in a control deck that's focused on Frostlich Jaina that has just a few of those value elementals. Like, for instance, um... Uh, the Arcane Artificer, the one mana 1-2 one, that lets you gain armor whenever you cast spells. There's a turn where you play that, gain some armor. Then the next turn you can play Arcanosaur to clear. Uh, I think that there would need to be probably four activators for Arcanosaur in the deck. So if you had the two Artificers, Baron Geddon, and maybe Pyros, maybe just those ones are enough. Yeah, okay. I think Arcanosaur has some legs. What would we cut for this? Yeah, guy, it's 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 mediocre. It's meaty frickin' ochre. I'm not I'm not over the moon about Arcanosaur. It's just hard for me to imagine the deck that it lives in, you know? Like, yeah, I love playing Baron Geddon and healing for 20 when I'm Frostless Jaina, but. Servant Kalmos is a turn five and leads into it. It doesn't though, right? Because you play the four five, and you play the Arcanosaur and you kill your four five. <laughs> you know? Mage Mage has a lot of board clears. Like we got Blizzard in this slot, we got Meteor, we got Flame Strikes, one mana more. Yeah, I mean, it feels pretty good. So I don't know. This this kind of feels bleh. elemental minion mage doesn't though. But that's the thing is that if you're playing a minion based deck. Don't you want, like, won't you run the risk of blowing up your deck? This could be my inexperience with Elemental Mage speaking, but yeah, this just seems, this, meh, it's meh. Daring Fire Eater. Your next hero power this turn deals two more damage. Uh, I mean, let's think of it this way. This is another way of saying your deck gets two more frost bolts, right? Your deck gets two more frost bolts. Can also proc frost lich Jaina a little bit. Oh, this seems okay. It seems okay. It's hard for me to envision a deck where this. Knocks it out of the park, you know. Like, it, in a very literal sense, works with Frostlich Jaina, but it, it doesn't. Like, if I'm playing a control deck, that list is pretty tight. Do I really want to put in a bunch of 1-1s one and shit? <laughs> it's one of those, if Odd Mage works, then this is going to be in there. But I actually think if it's Odd Mage, would not even want to run this. Eh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, eh. I wouldn't give it a zero, though. Elemental Evocation. The next elemental you play this turn costs two less. Okay. Okay, yeah. This makes sense to me. I'm an Elemental Mage. I'm trying to get an ever-growing board of uh, Elementals out. The way that I'm going to try to fight for board control is with minions, is with creatures doing stuff. I mean, hell, you can just turn five elemental evocation, play a blaze caller. I, I, you're going to be emptying your hand, but there's a pretty good amount of card draw with the book of specters, with the um, ruby spellstone. Yeah, I think elemental evocation is a great card. I think it, I think this is great. Gr eight, great. And if we think about it, Innervate has had a huge history of success with Druid. You've been able to do things like turn eight, play uh, Ultimate Infestation. You've been able to turn one or turn two, play a Yeti. You've been able to like turn three, go for a Nourish and then a Wild Growth. Th those were all those different circumstances. Um, 
where innervate was good. And if you said to me, okay, what if you just had conditional innervate? <laughs> There's only for creatures. Yeah, I think it would still be good. And this, I think it's still good. So I think this is great. Is zero odd or even? Zero is an even number because it can be expressed as a multiple of two. Pyromaniac, whenever your hero power kills a minion, draw a card. I know, I know that you're supposed to look at this and you're supposed to go, oh, my brain is melting, oh, shit. Um, meh, meh. Okay, so three mana, three fours. Three mana, three four is the stat line. That's how you know you've got a muscular three drop, right? It's the solid stat line for those, ooh, so good uh, creatures. But you don't really run three fours just because, right? You're not just going to be a control deck that's like, oh, yeah, I should just put a three four in the three drop spot. Hmm. Um, Eh. Like, th this is almost a five mana novice engineer with a larger body. I mean, it's a card that says five mana, deal one damage, and if that kills it, draw a card and summon a three four. I mean, it seems, yeah, no, this is a great point, Denunciator. Uh, says it's definitely an A-plus pick in Arena. Yeah, that makes sense, where you sort of run out of cards and you, you bang in there. Yeah, I think that this is not that great. By the way, all my evaluations for Constructed. I don't I don't play Arena. I just play Constructed. Yeah, th this is, eh. If there's an odd mage deck out there, this card's gonna want it. But, eh, eh, yeah, I mean, it probably makes an odd mage do something. Spirit of the Dragon Hawk. Sell for one turn. Your hero power also targets adjacent minions. Doesn't work in Odd Mage. Ha 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 ha. Terrible. Zero. 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 Not a good card. No. No Aroni. Super no. If you want to join me on the nope train, it's leaving. It's gone. It's been gone since we looked at Druid. Spirit of the Dragon Hawk is not good, man. Four mana, deal three damage, one to each thing. It's it, it's a cone of cold that doesn't freeze. All right, it's a it's a cone of cold that doesn't freeze. And then, so I'm gonna get to shoot it, and then I'm gonna come back and get to shoot it again. Oh, actually, I, I th there's one thing I keep forgetting. The stealth says you get this effect twice, right? I play the Spirit of the Dragon Hawk, I shoot, I'm stealth, it comes back to me, it loses stealth, I shoot again. Mmm. So, by the way, here is a great question by Maniacal Genius. It says, but what about the synergy with the 1-1? One, one? For any of you who don't know what Maniacal is talking about, it's this one, the Daring Fire Eater. Oh my gosh, what if you played that Loa, and then you bang down the Daring Fire Eater, and then you get to deal 3 damage and 3 damage and 3 damage. Isn't that amazing? Here, here's the basic way that I evaluate little combo-y things like that. First of all, I ask the question, is this the only legit way to do that sort of dope combo that exists. For instance, Druid has a number of ways to buff creatures, right? Savage Roar, um, Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild, Soul of the Forest. There's a lot of ways to buff if you have a wide board. So if you start thinking of summoning tokens and buffing them, you have a lot of ways to do that. So that's a consistent idea. If you are thinking about buffing hero power, it's like this. This is the one card to do it. So you only have two cards. So you need to draw one of these cards with one of these cards. Okay, so anytime you're in a situation where you only have like one card and one card, yeah, and you can run two copies of one of them, that's fine. But you basically have this one card and this one card need to work together. You lose consistency, so you don't have the consistency anymore. But 
What would make that okay if you didn't have the consistency? If the combo effect was so fucking good it almost won a game for you. Wah! And this doesn't do that. I'm trying to think of an example of like a real game winning, just like, mmm. Oh, Witching Hour with Hadronox. This is a great example, right? Ooh, I can use Witching Hour to summon this one card. The one, you know, like two Witching Hours with one Hadronox. <gasps> That's worth it. Because it summons a whole board of huge stats. So in other words, if you're ever looking for combos of cards, you either need ridiculous power with those two, or you need uh, duplicate effects. Like summon a lot of creature effects plus buff a lot of creature effects. This is a really good example. So if we look at Spirit of the Dragonhawk, I'm trying to evaluate it with no other combos in there, with no other bonuses to the hero damage. And this is just like, oh, I guess it's okay against token, I guess, but Mage is already great against token. Mage is already great against token. So so I think this is I think this is weak. I think this is weak, 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 weak. Scorch, deal four damage to a minion, cost one less if you played an elemental last turn. Three Mana, deal four damage. Oh, it says cost one, not cost one less. Thank God chat's here. Because I was looking at this and I was like, oh, conditionally becomes Shadow Bolt? Boo! <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um... So, for any of you deck builders out there, I want to stress something that I can just see coming. I've made this mistake so many times, but I want you to make this one. You look at this card, one mana deal four damage, and then you look at this card. Oh, zero mana make a cheaper thing? Oh, that's good. But make sure you don't put too many cheap elementals in the deck. This card is free so it gets out of the hand almost immediately this card is almost free so it's going to get out of the hand really easily so if you are playing normally then you're going to empty your hand fairly swiftly so if you have just like a two three and a three four and you're, you're curving out with a four five you just might not literally have enough damage so i think that th this is obviously a really good card but please try to include some nice mid and expensive sort of finisher-esque elementally creatures in there um this has anti-synergy with book of, of specters so that's something to consider uh, but i still think that's okay i still think it's fine fine logic blast wave deal two damage to all minions overkill add a random mage spell to your hand Oh, this... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the card that I was supposed to reveal, but I was unfortunately out of town um, during the requested time to produce and do this. And it was a lovely one made over at GameSpeed uh, to reveal this card. But this this card... Note that it's overkill at a random mage spell to your hand. So it's overkill on your own minions, too. So, for instance, Blood Mage Thalnos that already draws you a card. Play Blast Wave. Blast Wave will overkill Thalnos and will generally overkill a lot of other things. So you get a lot of cards into your hand. Um, I think... Please tell me it's only once, asked Mr. Elephant. It isn't. It isn't. You can summon a, you can get a lot of these things into your hand. So overkill, once again, is the mechanic for this set. This is anytime you deal more than lethal damage, so it has two health and you deal three damage or four or five or six then the overkill effect triggers. I think this is a reasonable one of. This is a reasonable one of. You can run one of it because alone, maybe you pick off some tokens, you turn one of their tokens into another spell, um, which is okay. Clearly anti-aggro, you, you're generally having a Thalmos in a lot of decks anyways, things like that. Yeah, I can, I, I can kinda see it. Uh, yeah, this is all right. This, this, this has some merit. This has some merit. Um, there's a lot of cards that are deal two damage to clear their board out. <clears throat> They're solid. Consecration. Holy Nova. You don't even need to do the overkill. You're just killing it. Uh, seems good. Seems good. Split an image. When one of your minions is attacked, summon a copy of it. Great in Elemental Mage. 
very nice in Elemental Mage. I think this is going to be a really nice card in Elemental. Careful with your Book of Spectres, because we're getting to the point where we have 8 to 10 spells in Elemental Mage. You know, your Elemental Invocations, your weird Bernie shop that deal 4 damage, cost 1 uh, if you cast an Elemental, or did something with it. Two Splitting Images, two Ruby Spell Stones, you know. This is good. Uh, this also has merit in a control deck, right? You play your Mega Man, you split and image it. This is a nice little card. It's slow, but I have historically adored all these slow-ass mage duplication things. Uh, duplicate, Echo Medivh. <laughs> Echo Medivh. Hex Lord Malacras. Add a copy of your opening hand to your hand. This is, this is okay. This is okay. This is okay. Here's the reason this is okay. Um, in control versus control matchups, particularly with control mage, it's really about card advantage. It's who has, <clears throat> excuse me, who has more cards. Um, it can be very difficult with Frostless Jaina to win in super long games because you just don't have a lot of power with those decks. You tend to be very, very, very slow. So uh, typically you win with Frostless Jaina and ultimate grindy outy, right? Just ultimate slow, slow, eventually get through the deck. Um, and so historically the cards that have been mage cards uh, that work in those types of fatigue focused Jaina decks are things like Cabalus Tome. Draw three spells from outside the game and put them into your hand. You're not drawing out of your deck, which would put you into fatigue yourself quicker. So I look at Hexlord Malacras, and Hexlord Malacras is like an eight mana Cabalus Tome that has a five five body. Because remember, you start with like three cards. Three cards if you are um, going first, four cards if you're going second. So I think this, is, this, this card's pretty, pretty reasonable in that deck. Um, I, I would absolutely want to run this card. I'd actually prefer to run this instead of the Elementals package. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, this is pretty good. I have very positive feelings about Hexlord Malacras. I really like Hexlord Malacras. Do you get the coin as Cheetor? I don't know. I don't think you do because it shows you the four cards. You hit okay, and then the coin <laughs> appears and then goes in, so I'm not sure. Um, yes, you do. Oh, okay. Well, you get four cards and a coin. Um, I I would not. I, it would not surprise me if they didn't include that definition. That would not surprise me. Um, just due to the logic of here's the four cards that you're choosing to mulligan, and then the game begins, and then the coin appears and goes into your hand. So, um, on stream they said no coin. Great. Just call me PP. That's perfect. Thank you so much for the clarification. That's great. Can anyone else confirm that? Can anyone else confirm? Because we're actually getting a whole bunch of debate in the chat. Does it count the uh, card you draw to start? Nope, it shouldn't. I mean, the card you draw is not part of your opening hand. That, your opening turn is not the same thing as your opening hand, you know? All right. If your hero power dealt eight damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Um... Eh, it's all right. This is this is all right. I mean, I mean, if Odd Mage is a deck, they're gonna put in this one. But like, um, actually, does anyone have confirmation on this? Because I I feel like my intuition was correct that it's the four cards or the three cards, and it doesn't include the coin. I feel like it does not include the coin. Can we get confirmation on this? I'm just going to look this up. X Lord Malacras coin. All right. Malacras. Our, 
sorry, we have confirmation that it used to. We have confirmation that it used to. All right. Who knows? No one knows. Whatever. Who gives a shit? All right. Conditional Ragnaros. Um, so an odd mage obviously would go ping, 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 summon Jonalai, and you'd be able to do this. Because if you if you cast the Hero Power four times in the first seven turns, um, you'd be able to send it out. I think this card is just okay. You know that? I, ju I just think it's okay, and I don't even think it fits into a lot of Control Mage decks. Um, I mean, I just think it's okay. Here, here's, here's where I'm waffling, okay? Here, here's where I'm waffling a little bit on this card. First of all, if there's a 4-4 four, four and an 8-8 eight, eight Ragnaros, that, that's good. Don't get me wrong, that's, that's good. Um, but it's not like Ragnaros was like this utterly game-breaking card in the really slow control decks. I, I thought that Ragnaros was particularly good in decks that were playing cards, playing creatures, hitting you in the face, hitting you in the face, and then boom, they throw down a Ragnaros, and that is what was really sick. Given this condition, we're closing our eyes and thinking, what are decks in the past that would be pinging pinging a lot, ping, say, eight times in a row or four times if you were a regular old odd mage. And then, boom, played a Ragnaros. Eh, it feels okay. You know, that, that, that feels okay. Um, so, again, naked Ragnaroses in the past have been fine. Ragnaroses were good, especially in the rampy decks and mid-range decks, uh, but... You just had tools for that. So I actually think this card is overall fine. Uh, part of my hesitancy with it is that this is one of those cards that does produce a lot of stats all of a sudden on the board, which is historically the best cards in Hearthstone. Dr. Boom was a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven that summoned some boom bots, right? This is going to be a 4-4 four, four and an 8-8 eight, eight that's shooting shit for free. We might be seeing a lot of big game hunters get run if mages get big, something like this. Happens to not be neutral. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I would give this an above average. I'd give it an above average rating. Above average. Blood Claw. Deal two dam deal five damage to your hero. Okay. Solid card. Very solid. Very, very solid. 10 out of 10, probably. This seems to be one of the best cards we've seen. Fuck is that good in aggro. Damn, onto the Paladin. Whoa. Zul'jin is better? I don't know, Shiny Akamura. I, th I think this card's pretty insane. Like, one mana cards are always going to have a lower power level than a ten mana card. But it's their relative power level at the time being. Like, if you play a Blood Claw in an aggro deck on turn one, you're clearing the board, clearing the way for your troops right away. I mean, you're, you, you just this just says you don't get board control against me until we get to at least turn three. So I think that this 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 card clearly establishes to me that Paladin is the king of aggro. I even think that this is so good, I almost negate what I was saying earlier. Oh, maybe Face Hunter's gonna come back. Because I mean, if you're a Face Hunter, you gotta deal with Blood Claws coming out. Flash a light, restore four health, draw a card. Oh, fascinating. Starting to feel a control Paladin coming on. This feels like a 29th card, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Revitalize. It literally is essentially identical to a Hearthstone card, or a Magic the Gathering card called Revitalize. Um, this person looks so happy to be getting electrocuted. Can we just say that? Look at this guy, just like, ah, oh, I love lightning in me. Yeah, I think this is alright. I feel pretty good about this, but it, it's not like a, oh my god, I can't wait to build around this. It feels like a 29th or 30th card in the deck. Time out. Your hero is immune until your next turn. Mmm. Yes. Control Paladin. Okay, so 
If I recall correctly, I have to look through all these Paladin cards really fast, right? Because this one gives you immunity. Um, interesting. Okay. I'm going to ignore that one. That's right. If you restored 10 health, you become huge. And then you make things in your thing huge. And this is you make another thing huge. This is the big one, the Immortal Prelate. Convert. Yeah, that's kind of hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's right. I, I remember I had some connected thoughts to this. Okay, so this is kind of an enabler for this. Healy Paladin archetype. Oh, yes. So timeout. Your hero is immune until your next turn. Um, excellent. I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, Mage was able to pull some real amazingness out with their ice blocks, like, this is amazing. Um, uh, there's a sort of quiet effect that timeout has that I think is equally as important. You can cast timeout and then attack with a weapon, and you get no damage to your hero, because it says your hero is immune starting now until your next turn. So, um... Yeah, I, I have no idea why this was not called Divinest Shield or something like that, right? <laughs> Bubble Hearth, of course, of course. Yeah, so, I mean, you can play this, swing with a True Silver Champion, swing with whatever mega badass weapon your Paladins have. And then, you're immune for the turn, and then it comes back to you. So this is, this seems spectacular for a Control Paladin. I will absolutely be building a Control Paladin. Stealth for one turn. After you cast a spell, summon a tiger with stats equal to its cost. This actually feels like one of the better cards that's here. Um, I actually think that this would be amazing in my even Buffadin Paladin that I hit Legend with uh, a little while back based on Kibblers. All right, you throw Spirit of the Tiger down. You can do this late, like turn eight. And then just play Blessing of Kings on it, and you just get a 4-4 four, four Tiger. And then you can start playing some uh, big old other creatures and so on and so forth. Ring the bell, so just summon a board full of 2-2s. Two Echo works great on this. I can see so many uses for Spirit of the Tiger. You can be a control paladin. You can play Spirit of the Tiger and play a um, Spike Ridge Steed. Get a 6-mana thing. Spear of the Tiger is stealthed. Next turn, play another Spike Ridge Steed. I keep saying summon a six mana thing. I, I mean, summon a six six thing. That's what I mean. So, I mean, I think this is just a ton of value. This is just a ridiculous ton of value. Zandalari Templar. If you've restored 10 health this game, gain plus four, plus four, and talent. This, this is an intriguing card, because this is bad against control. I said that wrong. This is bad against aggro. If you're an aggro deck and you slam down a bunch of creatures, what's the Paladin going to do? Play their vanilla 4-4? Perhaps if you have enough Healy stuff so you can get the Zondalari Templar down on turn 5. Turn 6. One silence is going to hurt it. I, I do like Zondalari Templar for the following reason. Um, one of the big weaknesses of large vanilla creatures historically in Hearthstone is that your mana caps out at 10. So if you want to play like a 9 mana really badass creature, what do you do now? You play it and you're just hoping that they can't kill it, right? This is why often decks that have 4, 5, 6 mana creatures have advantages over purely huge creature decks. The fact that you can play a five mana creature and then play a five mana spell, or play a six mana creature and then play a four mana spell. Um, hell, uh, God, I can't remember the name of the card. The five seven that gives plus three, plus three to Cthune. That druid card, you could play that and then swipe. Or just like simpler cards, um, you know. The fact that you could, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm going to keep repeating myself. So the fact that Zandalari Templar is an 8-8 with taunt for 4 means that you can then do something for 6 afterwards. So I can play a Zandalari Templar and then play a True Silver Champion and bonk in. Something like that. Um, so I think I think that this is legit good in a Control Paladin. Um, 
not just as a threat, but as a threat with more flexibility. Faraki Battle Axe. Overkill. Give a minion in your hand plus two plus two. Since when has a hand buff been good? Um, would this ever be good? No. So let's evaluate it along other metrics. Is dealing three damage a number of times good? It's actually not bad. I think it has merit in Arena. No, I'm not gonna run this in any of my constructed decks. Not so good. A new challenger, discover a six cost minion, summon it with divine shield and taunt. Is this good? I think so. I think this is a solid little card. Seven mana is, is a pretty nice slot uh, to, to sit in. I'd need to look at the six minion list though. Boulder Fist Ogre is nice. The nicest. Yeah, maybe this just isn't that good in Constructed. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. At first glance, I'm just like, oh, does it work in Control Paladin? And I think this has, I mean, <laughs> getting a Sunwalker out's actually not that bad for seven. I mean, here's the thing that's really weird. If you're a real Control deck, like, the difference between six and seven in a lot of circumstances is not as big if you're able to get stably to there. Um, so, I mean, literally, if this summons a Sunwalker, which is, like, a worst-case scenario, I, I, this is fine. Actually, this is fine. You probably want more consistent cards in there. Yeah, I just think maybe it's, it's that there's other worse cards. Okay, best fucking card in Paladin. Best card, most important card for enabling Paladin. Most important one. Number one. Number one. The best. The very best card. I think this is the best card that has been printed. Okay. Now, do you know why I think this is the best card that has been printed yet? Do you know why? All right. I really want this to be good. This is this is is an amazing card. This is an amazing card. This is a unbelievable ass card. The reason is the uh, Paladin Hero Power is the only hero power in the game that snowballs in terms of pressure, right? Mages can only deal one damage a turn. Rogue can only deal one damage a turn. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, technically, you, you only get a 1-1 one, one if you're playing as Shaman. So, when you have the Immortal Prelate, this means that you can never wind up decking yourself. You can never wind up going into Fatigue. And so if you can never wind up going into fatigue, you actually can truly play Warlock kinds of snowballs yet. No, in terms of the board, guys, the, the Warlock doesn't do anything to the board. It draws a card. <laughs> like, it's, it's the only thing that does a persistent growing threat on the board is the Paladin Hero Power. So you don't actually need cards to apply pressure. Um, you only need your Hero Power to apply pressure with, with Paladin. So if you have the Immortal Prelate, what this means is that you can put yourself in a situation where it's very likely that you can keep reshuffling through Immortal Prelates into your deck. There's some care that you have to take with this, which would be that, um, you know, if you draw really quickly and get to fatigue and then your opponent just doesn't kill the Immortal Prelate, eh, that's a little bit of an issue. Um, the other thing that's really nice about this is that I don't think that Paladin necessarily needs to just do a full control and only win in fatigue style deck by any measure. And the Immortal Prelate has value outside of all of those things. I think this is, this is excelente. And everyone's talking about silence and silence and silence and silence, but um, Paladin decks consistently apply a ton of pressure. And it it's a relatively weak silence target. The only situation in which, I mean, obviously silence does destroy the death rattle, but like, let's think about this. You're going 
to be playing against a paladin, and you're going to save your silence for a vanilla 1-3, just to make sure the paladin can't go into fatigue. Th this is... This is kind of a lot, right? What do you actually want silence for? Big shit, like uh, Spike Ridge Steed. That's what you want that, right? Like, a lot of people will look at this and go, oh my god, we can play this in Spike Ridge Steed and Blessing of Kings it, and then that gets silenced, and that sucks, right? That's, that's a bad case, but if you're just using this as a 1-3, that's just going back into the deck. Like, hang out if you're up against a... Uh, Togwoggle, Druid, and then just slam down your Immortal Prelates. The things they actually want to be casting their Silence targets on are things like Tyrion, are things like Spike Ridge Steeds, things like this. And so when I look at Immortal Prelate, I see I could potentially cast enchantments on it, sure. That's one way that you can get huge value out of this. But also, potentially, you can just cast nothing on it and have it as an anti-fatigue mechanic. And that's why I think this is so good. It can flexibly do both of those things. It's a 1-3 for 2, which is just a fine stat line if I need to slam it down. I just think this is, this is an exceptional card. This is really nice. And thank God it has some goddamn counterplay. Can we say that? Because Jade's was so stupid. And then they were just like, oh, we're going to print Skulking, guys. If you draw it, you immediately win. If you don't, you lose. And if it does mean that there's going to be two Owls and two Spellbreakers in every deck, well, then good luck being able to stay relevant on the board against a Paladin with two owls and two spell spellbreakers <laughs> like i think this is i is pure profit i love this one high priest thekel you know let's call him high priest thekel this is high priest thekel convert all but one of your heroes health into amoire i don't give a shit I mean, actually, that's a pretty sick way to get Molten Giants out. Yeah, okay, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, that's fucking tight. Okay. Even with just the Molten Giant combination, that's pretty great. Um, this is a weird card. Yeah, it does allow you to heal back up and just have like a, a bedillion bazillion health. Molten Giant is non-standard. Oh, fuck, I forgot. No, nah, I don't like this card then. Screw this card. This card's bad. Why, why, who wants all this health? Oh my god, I can't wait to be able to make my heal relevant. You know what? You could also not run this card and recall that Paladins do take damage in a game of Hearthstone. So I, I would give this a big fat... <sighs> Yeah, not a good card. Oh my god. Zero star, in fact. Zero! High Priest Thekel sucks! Oh my god. Destroys Malagos deck. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like it's a tech card. It's, there, there's some interesting technology there. No downside, 3 mana, 3, 4. Oh, the downside of a 3 mana, 3, 4 is that you're running it. Instead of something else valuable. Uh, there's there are, You do not have a lot of slots in Hearthstone. You are fixed hard at 30 cards, so... Um, yeah, no, I, I think High Priest Deckel is a is big old big old pile of zeros, man. We're hitting out with zero. Shervala, the Tiger, Divine Shield, Rush, Life Steal. Costs one less for each mana you've spent on spells. I think this card is solid. It's a solid little card. Um, it's a, it's a solid little card. Why? I mean, let's assume we can cast this. Cost 25, right? Let's just call it, it has a fair cost, a like six or some shit. Um, this is actually, it's not that difficult to discount this because it's one less for each mana you spent on spells. So I expect that by turn 12, 13, 14, 15, something like that. This is this is very clearly a control versus control card. Because I mean, it's the only way you're gonna get that long. Maybe control versus mid range, that sort of thing. It's a dead card against aggro, obviously. Um, but the thing that's nice about this is that it is kind, it's kind of like a big game hunter that heals for seven. You know what I mean? It's okay. It seems okay. Um, 
seems fine. It, but it might not even be good enough to be run. Like, it makes sense, again, control versus control, or control versus mid-range-ish. But all you're doing is healing for a little bit. Which, if you're in control versus control, you don't really need the health that much. Again, a 7-5 bodies, meh. You can't Holy Wrath for a billion, that's fine. Regenerate, restore 3 health. Boo! It is its mana cost. Zero mana cards are busted or useless, right? So, it's a three mana. It's a zero mana card that restores three health. Big boo. A BFB. A big fat boo to this one, okay? <laughs> By the way, someone call me out. Please, I insist to call me out if I am misevaluating. I think I have been pretty consistent about identifying cards as incredible or horrible. And trying to make as few as possible. Uh, could be good, could be bad. I've done that with a few cards. But I feel like I've been pretty polarized. And I like doing that. I don't want to be a wiffle waffler in a card review. Have I been sufficiently boo-ish or oh my god busted-ish? Yeah, maybe I've actually been doing more waffling than that. Maybe a little more waffling. But this card's definitely a big old zero out of boo. On a scale of one to boo, it, does, it hits a zero. We don't, even, we don't even boo at it. We just shake our head and go, why? Why does this exist? However, we're going to have to figure out some way to make use of this card, because on Day 9 TV, we're not trying to hit number one legend, let me tell you that much. Sand Drudge. Oof, love the word drudge. Love the word drudge. Whenever you cast a spell, summon a 1-1 one, one zombie with taunt. Whoa! Oh my, oh, dude, do you see the synergy? Oh, thank God we have these buttons. Wow. What? Oh. Are people screaming in the background? Fromato, people are screaming in the foreground. I'm screaming. And yes, my window's open because it's hot in here because I'm in here. <sighs> Sandrudge is mediocre. Okay, this is this is like, please close your eyes and pretend I'm an imp gang boss. So, I don't know. This is not, there, there historically has not been a lot of like board presency priests banging down the front door. And if they are, I'm just gonna put my hands here and squeeze until I pass out because I don't want to be up against more priest archetypes, man. Seance. I like this card because it has my name in it. Choose a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, Shansi. Um, I, I, okay, so Another another of the consistent, this has been good in Hearthstone things, is when you get multiple copies of a card beyond two. Uh, you can run two copies of almost all cards because that's what makes it okay. But when you get multiple of things, you know, like Thorison, and then I clone Thorison. Ooh, that's when things start to get good. Um, so there's a lot of legendary cards that feel really sicko, and you can get additional of them with Seance. And, and you, you can kind of think of it as if I'm doing like a controly deck and I want to have, let's just do some of the classics. We have a Ragnaros. We got a Lich King in there. We got a Dr. Boom. What you might say to yourself is, you know what? I'm just going to cut the Ragnaros, cut the Lich King, and put in Dr. Boom in two seances because I can always go boom, seance, seance. Um, so I, I think this is a great card. I view this kind of as a free for member. Uh, with, with some conditions, you, it has to be an eight mana, and then you have to like resummon it. But I, I think I think Shansi is a good card. I think this is a good enough card to just have kind of an archetypically slow grindy control deck. Uh, hell, we could even do a Shadow Priest <gasps> that runs one excellent legendary that we play and we just Shansi it. Isn't that great? Keep Zolaing and Shansiing. A grave horror. Costs one less for each spell you've cast this game. I mean, it's, it's, why would you run this card? Can you explain to me why you would run this card? Like, wh when is it going to be good? Okay, let, let's break it into two. I am an unbelievably... Uh, scratch myself. Mm. I'm an unbelievably aggressive deck that's bursting you and blasting you with spells. And right when you think, oh, I've finally stabilized, kablow, I play the Grave Horror. Oh! 
are we really going to be casting like six or seven spells before we get to turn six or seven so we could run that out <sighs> no okay let's imagine we're in a control deck when is this good in control why would I want to run this instead of a very good legendary super duper note there's one situation in which I can envision Grave Horror being run. One. Uno. Just. Ah. Which is if I am a deck that is slow and controlling and slow and controlling, and then later on I want to play a big spell and then boom, defend with a Grave Horror. That's where I can imagine it working. Outside of that, zero out of ten never going to get run. Mass hysteria. Force each minion to attack each other to attack another random minion. How does this work? Because let's say I have minion A and minion B, and minion A is little and minion B is big. Is it like minion A goes, ugh, and then minion B goes, ugh, right back? Like, do they double hit each other? Or is it just like, in some random order, things go willy dilly nilly against each other? Okay, well, I, I have no way to evaluate this card. This card is all values. It is the best card in the set. It's the worst card in the set. It's okay. It's above average. It's below average. It's not in the set. It's in this set, and you should run it in all your decks. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how to evaluate this thing. It's a big old question mark for me. Spirit of the Dead. Stealth for just a turn. After friendly minion dies, shuffle a one-cost copy of it into your deck. I'm gonna shut this door. And I'm back. Um, yeah, no, I totally, I'm copping out on this car. I don't know how to evaluate that one. Spirit of the Dead, I actually think this is probably the best one we've seen so far. Probably the best one we've seen so far. This is probably the best one we've seen so far. Um, Cause you have pretty good control over which one dies. A lot of the time and it's gonna be a big boy well maybe this is a little weaker than the well, there was another card that was similar to this that we looked at I I, I, I uh, this card is seems okay no, it's really. Here, here's why I'm doing this wiggly, right? Because Spirit of the Dead is, in a lot of ways, very similar to Seance, right? You're just getting it into your deck, and it costs one instead of putting it into your hand, and it's the same cost. But we have the same problem that we had when we were talking about the Hunter, that we actually have to wait for it to come back to our turn so we can try to get something to die. This seems inconsistent at best. I actually think that this is going to be a hell of a lot better if we're some sort of aggro or mid-range priest. I don't even know if that exists. Happy one year, Summer Night Sheriff. Mwah. I actually think this is, this is only okay. This seems this seems okay. It's uh, it's a little conditional. This could be insane circumstantially. Like this could really blow it out of the water. Um, Akanai Phantasm Battle Cry. This turn, your healing effects deal damage instead. Oh, nice. Whoa. This actually kind of looks like it would fit great into an aggro priest. Um, I'm starting to think that there's more ways to do some kind of disgusting blow you up combos. Hmm. It's plausible that regenerate is just used with an Akanai Phantasm to just do, do the goods. <laughs> Um, 
this is interesting. I actually, this is, is, is a good and cool card. I think it, it makes me want to do something more aggressive. That's tight. Surrender to Madness. Destroy three of your mana crystals. Give all minions in your deck plus two, plus two. Fascinating design. Finally. Finally, we get some real, real insane shit going on here. Meme card? Oh, dude. Screw meme for a moment. This... Here's the reason I would not call this a meme card. This does a consistent, predictable effect that you can plan around. This is... This is probably my favorite card that we've seen so far. From a designer standpoint. Like, that is a cool design. I mean, this could be terrible. I'm taking a moment to think about it, right? Because you, you, you might want to say to yourself, oh, okay, well, let's be in a control deck where we go to 10 mana, and then we're okay going back down to 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, that's how we're going to make this puppy work. But... Hmm... I don't know. I'm going to cop out on this one. I mean, I, I, evaluatory, it's... It, this seems terrible. This seems like a terrible card. Um, there's zoo decks that manage to make it work. Like, maybe we just put a bunch of 1, 2, and 3 mana cards in our deck and just keep blowing up, resetting, and trying again, trying again. Like, I don't know. Princess Talanji. Summon all minions from your hand that didn't start in your deck. So th th this actually feels like another diamond spellstone. That's what it looks like, yeah. You play, you play Talanji, or you play Seance on your big dudes. They go into your hand, and then you play Talanji, and those big, two big dudes come out. So all of a sudden, you have a 7-5, like an 8-8, eight, eight, and an 8-8. Eight, eight. They clear that, then you Diamond Spellstone, you summon a bunch of stuff. They kill that Diamond Spellstone. I, I think it's fine. Has synergy with the totem we just saw? Kind of. I actually don't think this is that consistent. That's the thing. I don't think this is that consistent. Um can obviously do something amazing in games every now and again, but I just don't think it's that consistent. This this feels like something that you can do consistently um, with Seance and a few other effects, and it will just feel like another Sapphire or Diamond Spellstone. Bwansamdi the Dead. Draw one cost minions from your deck until your hand is full. Okay. Eh. The obvious answer is we get huge creatures to turn into one cost minions, and then we can play Blom to draw them out, and then we can play them because they cost one. Uh, but th that actually seems like the most roundabout way to just get big things. Right? Like, Diamond Spellstone makes sense. Like, First of all, let's think about Resurrect Priest that runs the Diamond Spellstones, yeah? The way that that deck works is that we have a whole bunch of spells that delay and buy time and draw. And then we have just a few big dudes. Not a lot. Just a few. And a few ways to cheat them out. Uh, why RJ to draw things out of the deck? Or um, maybe a big Malagos is in there. Or maybe we have some of our big scary obsidian statues things like this but there's actually it's not like there's 15 of those there's like five it's, it's like not a lot of them and so if we're imagining that deck trying to get spirit of the dead off we don't have a lot of targets to even hit spirit of the dead so now we'd be like oh well crap maybe we actually want to put some more things in there maybe that are more smooth on the curve maybe we want some like four five six seven eight mana creatures in a spread so we can trigger them with spirit of the dead right so we're a little bit more mid-rangey and we're doing this mid-rangey deck so that way we can actually play a bomb samdi and then replay them again that is starting to feel a little weird right 
This I can actually make sense out of. It takes up one slot, Seance takes up two slots. Instead of, say, having six huge creatures, you have four huge creatures. You intend on seancing a couple of them, so now you have a total of six with the seances. Princess Talanji is your seventh, right? So that, that makes sense. I think I think this card I can make sense out of. This card I can't. I think Bomb Samdi's bad. It could be an interesting meme deck, an aggro deck. Hey! This seems just wildly, wildly inconsistent. All right, we're done with Priest. I still think that uh, Paladin feels really good. Hunt feels really good. Serrated Tooth. Death Rattle, give your minions rush. Whoa. Okay. So what this deck is saying, yeah, this deck is weird. This deck is weird. Here's why this deck is weird. I actually don't like this design. I really don't like this design because Rush is one of the least visceral mechanics that has ever existed in Hearthstone. Rush is a mechanic that exists because another mechanic, Charge, breaks the game too often, but there's this middle ground mechanic that is design-wise stable. You know what I mean? Um, but in terms of the visceral thrill and satisfaction, like Adapt, I actually really liked. It wound up not being good very often, but like, I like the idea of, I'm gonna adapt a creature, I get to choose a thing and make it stronger, yeah! Rush, I'm like, okay, I conceptually, rationally get it, but I'm not fist pumping. Or maybe a simpler example, goddamn dragons in Blackrock Mountain, give me dragons, right? When I look at this, give your minions rush. Just ignore all the other text on the card. Just give your minions rush. What makes me so... What makes me be like, oh my god, that's so sick. Give your minions charge. Yeah, that gets your little brain ticking. Like, oh my god, I'm going to be able to win the game now. Give your minions rush is real. Real. Circumstantial. And it's okay if I have a card in hand, I want to plan around it. But this, this is like so many steps removed, right? This is like in three turns... If you attack every turn, and keep in mind you're trying to get value out of the one damage that you're allocating properly, but in three turns, you need to make sure you prepare that board state so that you can make use of Rush. Um, and there, like everything about this is like really cerebral and not cool like oh but i could spend two mana to hero power and then with my remaining three mana on turn five then i could play things out like all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to on turn 10 play the serrated tooth immediately hero power and with my remaining seven mana i now have a bunch of rush creatures out whoa i guess if you play those with seven mana is this an arena card i mean kinda I guess it's like oh f turn the tides I think this is the worst designed card this is heinously unexciting this is the least exciting thing I've ever seen like like this you can imagine like oh shit how do I get things that didn't start in my deck oh my god cool you know like th this is actually cool this does something fucking big and cool you destroy your mana crystals you make shit in your deck permanently huge whoa I mean this might suck but this is cool this might be good, but this is not fucking cool, man. I, I, I actually criticize that in terms of just the, the, the quality of interest around that. Woo! Stolen Steel. Discover a weapon from another class. All right. Welcome to RNG Town. Um, uh, discover a weapon from another class. It's from another class. Is it from your opponent's class? Probably not, because that's not what it says. <sighs> Probably terrible. I mean, it's full random, and there's a lot of weak weapons out there, so. Walk the plank, destroy an undamaged minion. Ah. Yay. Yay. By the way, one of the reasons why I think this is probably bad is you're spending mana on a turn to put something into your hand that could be bad. Slow. If it was two mana summon a weapon that you discover from another class. That would actually be insane. 
Walk the plank, destroy an undamaged minion. So like this, this, this is a four mana assassinate. Um, it's plausibly good. This feels like printing a cheaper assassinate. This seems like a one of. Dragonroy44 says, wait, isn't that also a card from Magic? Yeah, it's two black. Walk the plank is destroy a non-merfolk, I believe. Um, yeah, walk the plank doesn't actually seem like it is that good. It's at most a one of, but probably is not going to get run. Because here's the thing. Um, most of the rogue decks are actually like tempo-based decks, you know, where you summon a lot of spiders with the Foul Deray Strider. Uh, you're trying to go wide, and once you're at turn like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you sort of have these big bursts of power and you punch through. Rarely is your problem that you're having difficulties with large single targets, right? You, can, you have Bounce, you have all sorts of Eviscerates that can also go for the face. Um, even things like the Shadow Strike, the three mana deal five damage to an undamaged minion, was like a one of and this is four mana. Four mana is is a weird thing to say. This is a very expensive rogue card. Rogue cards want to be like zero, one, two, and three. Like four is starting to be like, ooh, this is a card you just play on a turn when you got no combo plan. Um, but fuck, I mean, we have we have Vile Swine Slayer. Why would you want this? Bloodsail Howler, Rush, Battlecry gains plus one, plus one for each other pirate you control. Is Pirate Rogue gonna be a thing? I mean, is this time? Is Patches even in this game anymore? Whoa. Whoa. Are pirates the new elf ball? Are you kidding me? Okay, this deck, or this card is a zero out of 10 if pirates are not a thing, and it's a 10 out of 10 if pirates are a thing, right? The fact that it's a two mana, plausibly get huge guy. I just don't remember the pirates that well, that's the thing. I think this card sucks. I just think, I regular old miracles, Greg. Ooh, this is so damn conditional. This card is weak on its own. A two mana, one one with rush, boo. A two mana three three with a rush. Uh, uh. Actually, the more I think about it, the more card. This is a bad card. I'm sorry, I stated it wrong. It's zero out of ten. Absolute walking dust disguised as a monkey. Okay. Um, if if there were two other pirates out, and I played the Bloodsail Howler for two, and had a three three with rush, am I fist pumping? I don't think so. I don't think that I'm going to try to conditionally play a bunch of other pirates so I can get a 3-3 with a rush and be like, oh, 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 I get my girlfriend in this room. She doesn't play this game, but she's going to love this synergy. Like, I don't know. Zero. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Not going to do it. Draw two pirates from your deck. End a weapon. Are pirates good? Zero out of ten. Don't give me this nonsense. Here, here's actually the only place where Raiding Party fits in, this is it. This is the only place where Raiding Party fits in is a regular, strong, miracle-style rogue deck that happens to run two pirates and a weapon. Or like a Kingsbane deck that happens to run two pirates and that Kingsbane. So this is not even a pirate card. It, I mean, it says pirate in it, and those, those people in the picture, those are pirates. But this is like a Kingsbane card or like a miracle card. It's, it's pay three mana, draw three cards. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure Kingsbane runs the three pirates because they're in the green skin. They run those little... Are, the South Sea deckhands aren't in the game anymore, right? Are they in the game? South Sea deckhands? Are those in standard? South Sea Deckhand. I'm sorry, not the South Sea Deckhand. What am I talking about? Um, the four, four, four mana that has a death rattle. Oh, God, not the South Sea Deckhand. Four mana, four, four, death rattle. The, with a squid mouth. A little squid. 
Squid, pirate, hearth, yeah, South Sea Squid Faith. South Sea Squid Faith. I don't think that's in standard anymore. This was from Whispers of the Old God, right? I am correct. Um, all right. Yeah, then I, I actually think the Spirit of the Spirit of the Shark is going to be that great. Deal three damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each of your pirates. What? But yeah, I'm sorry. Let me finish this thought. Yeah, so so S South Sea Squid Face. Uh, if that were in in like a King's Bane deck, you could draw those puppies and you're just South or Green Skin, Captain Green Skin, play all those poopers, something something like that. And, King's Bane Rogue, but yeah, I just don't, I just don't think this is a weird card, and it will be used in non pirate decks. Spirit of the Shark, sell for one turn. Your minions battle cries and combos trigger twice. Probably good. Probably. I think this is probably very, very strong because it comes out and it's stealthed, and then the next turn you can do like Creature, Vile Spine Slayer. Oh, wait a minute. No, you can't. Oh shit, I realize I misthought about this, right? Because if you Vile Spine Slayer, when you target a creature, it just kills it twice. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Foul the Race, Striders are pretty good. I actually think Spear of the Shark is okay with Edwin. Um, I actually think it's not good with Edwin. Because, like, if you're making a big Edwin, if Edwin's, like, an 8-8 or a 16-16, the situation is essentially the same for the opponent. They either have the single target removal for it or they don't. Um, so yeah, I, I don't actually think that this is that good for Edwin. It seems like only really, like, it's marginal value with something like a SI7 agent. It's good with a Faldere Strider. That actually makes sense to me. Um, I think this is fine. This is a fine card. I don't think it's, nothing in my head is going, whoa, like crazy. I don't know, maybe it's amazing with pirates. All the minstrels, like, that's like okay with an elven minstrel. It's like okay with that. And wild, there's Tinker's Sharp Sword Oil. Oh my god, that's right. Ooh. Cannon Barrage. I don't know what Pirate Rogue is. I don't even know. Deal three damage to random enemy. Repeat for each of your pirates. This seems terrible. Because pirates seem terrible. Pirate Rogue is not a thing. Repeat after me. Pirate Rogue is not a thing. It's not a thing. Zero. We're not going to do the Cannon Barrage. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think Pirate Rogues are a thing. I don't think they're a thing. Accuser Man goes, this Pirate Rogue will be a thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Battle Cry. Discover a 1-1 one, one copy of a Battle Cry minion. It costs one. Um, It's not a pirate. Can't run it. Gurubashi Heitmon. Seems inconsistent. A 5-7 seven for 7 is certainly understated. So the only way that actually makes this good is if the battle cry of your soon-to-be 1-1 one, one minion is so great. Um, what battle cry do you even want in Rogue? Valderay Strider, I guess, is it? Maybe Valspine Slayer? That seems good, too. I'd rather just run a bounce effect if I'm really going for that, you know. Yeah, like, why run a Gurubashi Heitmon when you could run a Shadow Step? You know what I mean? Oh, Vile Spine's combo. Great call. Great call. These are all combo cards. Yeah, no, 0 out of 10. Captain Hook Tusk. It's a pirate. Summon three pirates from your deck. Give them rush. Oh, that's bad. Woo! Whoa! Whoa! That's not good. Whoa! Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Repeat after me. Pirate Rogue is not a thing. Okay. 8 mana 6-3. Vomit. Vomit right under my nice new jeans. Okay. Oh my god. 
What? This this looks awful. I can't even believe it. Okay, so anyways, 8 mana, 6, 3. Super weak. This will trade with a 2 mana, 3, 2. It's not good. But you summon pirates from your deck. What are most pirates? Cheap ass minions. Are there any thick, swole ass pirates? Like, if this was summon a bunch of 8 mana creatures and give them rush, you'd clear the board and you'd have big things. This is... Get a 6-3, and in exchange, you might kill two creatures with creatures you summon. Oh, and guaranteed they'll, they'll get cleared by one sweeper. This seems bad. Oh, happy four years, Bako Taco. Hell yeah. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. I mean, what, what, don't a lot of the pirates have battle cries anyways, so they get played, or they get summoned from your deck, so they don't even trigger the battle cry? Damn. Grawl, it's a shark! Battlecry, eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Death Rattle, add it to your hand. Hey, Brando Blaze. Seems bad. Seems bad. Zero out of ten. Zero, zero, zero. The reason I think Grawl the Shark is a 0 out of 10 card, uh, it is a shark, which makes me want to give it a 10 out of 10. I did watch the Meg, and I did enjoy myself, although that movie was also, uh, it's slogged in the second half, man. I just want to keep seeing stuff getting eaten by a giant shark, and then it paid off. A bunch of stuff got eaten by a giant shark in the end. It was great. Uh, but Growl the Shark, eat a minion in your deck and gain its stats. Death rattle, add it to your hand. Ha, 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 ha. So it kind of cycles. It can get silenced. It's a lot of like this now see this seems like a meme card to me you know this is like a deck where you put in nothing but huge stuff and control cards and then you play growl the shark and it's like a 614 because it ain't malagos um wow these rogue cards are uninspiring wow Woo! what a doozy what a dilly doozy do this one is yeah i think growl the shark is bad uh it is like conditionally get a minion sometimes get silenced and you don't though isn't that sad uh maybe you can trigger his death rattle and get multiple copies of it maybe yeah but this is just this is just so like it's a five mana two two so it's got to eat something big to justify just its stat-wise cost, because this this is a vanilla minion. Keep in mind. So we we want to not run a lot of our cheap minions. That seems bad, doesn't it? Doesn't that seem bad to just eat cheap minions or to like disclude those from the deck? Excuse me, exclude those from the deck. Grawl the shark! What are you doing there? All right. Well, there's a reason sharks went extinct, huh? Reign of Toads. Summon three, two, four Toads with Taunt. Overload three. God, is that is it me or is this expensive? I actually think that this is okay. I actually think that this is okay. You want to hear that tone of voice one more time? I actually think this... <laughs> I couldn't do it. You only got two in me. I think Reign of Toods is actually okay. I think Reign of Toods... It's, it's, it's a... It's Phantom Militia, but it overloads. And works really great in my Snow Clones deck. Let's see here. Totemic Smash. Deal two damage. Summon a basic totem. Um. I, I mean, I think I think this is. It's deal two damage though. It's not deal two damage to a minion. It's deal two damage. You got a Malagos deck. Oh god, where's my ancestral recall? Woo! Cheap damage is powerful. Yeah, no, you're you're telling me, man. So 
This is this card's really weird. God, that card's weird. You're gonna see a one health thing, kill it and summon a totem. That's weird. That's like a weird pile of effects. I mean, I guess it gets value in spell damage. I don't know. I I don't. I think this is this is mediocre. This is like this is like my two out of four scale. Gross. I like scales from one to four, where it's like terrible and amazing is the one in the four, and like below average, above average. So I don't like anything in the middle. Um, all right. The this thing is like a two. Like, it's, it's just two damage. What am I going to get it to three so that way I can kill a two health thing? And I mean, it, it's also one cost. It's not supposed to be amazing. Um, but there's a lot of, like, one mana deal two damage. It's, like, pretty good. It's, it's I don't know. It's like a two. It's okay. It's okay. Wartbringer. Nice. If you played two spells this turn, deal two damage. Uh, uh, d am I crazy? Because this this seems this seems like a zero. This seems like a zero card, right? On a scale of one, four, I think this is a zero. If I'm if I'm able to play two spells in a turn. Okay, the only place where a Wartbringer is like really great is in some weird hybrid creature spell aggro deck where on like turn four you do like a zero mana spell, a two mana spell, you play a Wartbringer, you play another thing. Um, but God, is that a hard conditional on a deck that's empty and everything. Yeah, I gotta give this one a zero. We're not, we're not gonna be running this card anytime soon. Bog Slosh, return a friendly minion to your hand and give it plus two, plus two. Oh, that is an interesting card. That's really interesting, because maybe you trade, bounce it, and replay it. It's also a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. It's an elemental. I think this, is, this card's solid. This card's solid. Um, I think it's solid. Not sensational. I think it's, I think it's solid. Lick'em. Has plus 2 attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. Holy shit, a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 4. What? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Whoa! Whoa. Guys, I regularly play decks that are shaman that run the overload mechanic. Lickum's gonna feel so good. It is less than an eagle horn bow, and it is always gonna be an eagle horn bow's worth of power. It's... What the holy god? It's so good. It's a weapon too. What? Oh my god, this is the best card we've seen so far. Oh my god. Yeah. And the name is Lickum. Whoa. Whoa. Zul'jin still exists. Tumji, I think this card is a thousand times better than Zul'jin. Zul'jin is a 10 mana card that requires dependencies and is a big payoff when you get there. But this, you just play on turn two and start beating the face. Uh, this is substantially better than uh, Zul'jin. In my humble and completely correct opinion. Fuck. That's good. Zul'jin actually is really good. I don't know if I should say that. Maybe Zul'jin's tied with Lickin. Because the thing is that um, Yog saron felt busted. And Zul'jin is like a controllable Yog saron Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe Zul'jin's actually right up there with Lickin. But Lickin's, Lickin's good. Can you, Im can you see the power of the Lickin? Oh my lord. Spirit of the Frog. Oh, by the way, this solves an exact problem that you have if you're doing this sort of control overload shaman snow clones deck. You kind of struggle with some early control sometimes. And it's just 
punching through things. And I mean, this is this is gonna be great in aggro. Oh, it's so good. Why are we on this screen? This is the wrong screen. It says the show starting in a long time. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Forgive me. All right. Spirit of the Frog. Stealth for one turn. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a spell from your deck that costs one more. Um. What do we think, friends? What do we think? I think this is mediocre. I think this is mediocre. It's a way to have some controlled card draw. Like if you're a control deck and you play this on turn three and then you play like a five mana thing so you get a six mana spell. Um, it, it just, it seems inconsistent is the thing I worry about. It, I mean, like a lot of these cards, I just, I'm, I'm comparing all these Spirits of the Loa to like Novice Engineer. Like, does this do better than a Novice Engineer? Like a Novice Engineer just draws a damn card, right? This is like, if you do have the card that costs one more mana and you have the mana available after casting Spirit of the Frog, then you get to do it. I'll just run a Novice Engineer, you know what I mean? So uh, this seems like, mm -hmm. The thing that has to be true for this card is you have to be constructing these tiers of spells where this is good. This I'm gonna always cast like, no matter what is the state of the board is, so that then I can get this card, and then this is gonna let me do this. You know, it's those sorts of things that are ugh, big bad voodoo. Your friendly minion death rattle summon a random minion that costs one more. I'm gonna run this in a fucking snow clones deck, man. The, see, the thing is that in terms of the value, this is actually a great card. This is a great card. Like, if you have a four mana creature, it's gonna summon a five mana creature and it costs you two mana. Um. I mean, it's it, this is just a very powerful effect. But if you get silenced, you are like, fuck a Roni, man. You are so dead. If this gets silenced, you are you're just like, fuck. Or you you want to like rip out your head. But I mean, it's still not that bad. I think this is incredible. I think I think this is incredible. Uh, I think this is actually a very, very, very incredible card. Because um, I mean, if you think about when does silence really hurt you a ton? You know when silence really hurts you a ton? It's when you need that taunt up to stay alive and then you die or something like that. Um, if your Tyrion gets silenced, you're like, that sucked, but I got a six six out of it. I think Big Bad Voodoo. I think it sounds, it certainly hurts more than the Tyrion because you don't have as big a body, but. Mm. It's a worse Ancestral Spirit, which never saw play. Dude, Ancestral Spirit sees play. I run that card. It's, it's, it's actually a very reasonable card, and this is a better Ancestral Spirit because Ancestral Spirit is Death Rattle or summon this minion. This is Death Rattle summon a larger minion, summon an even larger man. Hey, Drabez, thanks for the five gifts to Free Goliath, Free Gazoidon, Elros451, XTK3, and Gaddy's underscore. Oh, hell yeah. I think this is very good. I think this is actually very good. Haunting Visions. The next spell you cast this turn costs three less. Discover a spell! What? Isn't this... Isn't this amazing? How is this not amazing? What? Wait, 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 wait. Why is this a card? Wait a minute. Wait, because this is like... This is like a, a more controllable Farsight. Oh, shit. Wait a... Hmm... Hmm. 
Interesting. So basically, well, th this this actually has a lot more conditions on it. Uh, now that I've spent a moment to think about it, because I have to have a card I want to cast, right? Like a volcano, and I also have to have a haunting visions. Because if I don't have two spells, if I just have the haunting visions in the hand, we're not getting any value out of the first part. It's just transforming into a spell. If this was three mana, discover a spell. That that still might actually be good enough because there's some really good spells in. Um, Shaman. It'd have to be a little cheaper than that. You can also play the one that you do discover. That can actually get you out of a pickle, huh? God, I think this is very good. This is very good, but uh, th this is obviously something that is supportive of an existing archetype rather than a build-around sort of thing. But, I mean, if you're a control deck, you're already running a lot of spells, so I think that's... I like this card. I really like it. It's a Shaman Glyph, man. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. Uh, I really think that this is Hex and Crushing Hand. Evolve, I would not really love, because, uh, boy, does that sound conditional as hell, right? How, when do you ever have three minions out that you can then Zentimo to the side and slam in there? I can actually see the Zentimo just two for one where you play a Zentimo and then you play Crushing Hands and you just two for two'd. Um... The one wording that I have that's a little... Oh, this can also get around Hexproof, which is interesting, because you can target a minion and then the... the not the Hexproof, the Shroud minion next to it also goes off. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an interesting question. Does it actually cast... The spell extra times? Like, if I do Crushing Hand, is it going to overload me for nine? Gets around Stealthy. I guess around Stealth, Shroud, Hexproof, all those things. It overloads twice? Well, gee, this wording's weird. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, cast copies of that spell on the adjacent targets? Fuck. God, that wording is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess from a technical standpoint, if it's like whenever you cast a spell, cast multiple times, but um, does this apply to other things where if it's like, uh, if you get like a Zentimo and a Hunter, does it going to like do multiple procs on Zul'jin or yogg and Wild? Yeah, because I would assume not, because it, it doesn't say cast twice. It says targets. I don't know. Either way, the idea of doing this in crushing hands or, you know, playing a Snow Fury Giant and then ancestraling both of them, something like that, actually feels pretty pretty tight. Kragwa, the Fragwa. Return all spells you played last turn to your hand. A solid card. A solid card. Let's imagine for a moment you played one nice spell the previous turn. One six or seven mana spell, like a sapphire spell stone, a volcano, something like that. And then the next year you just play Kragwa and you just get that spell back. I would be very happy with this, you know. Um... Obviously, has huge synergy with Zentimo, right? Because Zentimo, you, you cast a spell, and if it is three unique copies cast, and then you prog you get those three things back. Um, this is this seems very excellent. This seems very excellent. Ah, yes, Warlock. I think this is our last class to go through. Then we have, have the neutrals. Seven mana, five, eight. What a weird stat line. Blood Troll Sapper. After a friendly minion dies, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Oh, oh. Well, 
Warrior. Oh, yeah, we have Warrior. Damn, we're taking our sweet time today. Um, the problem I have with this card is that the circumstances in which it's good doesn't make sense to be running this card. Like, oh, we're a zoo deck and we couldn't punch through for damage, so we're going to wait till turn seven and play a Blood Sapper Man and do it. This seems weird. It's a weird card. I don't think it even has a place. Even though I think that the effect is quite good. Demon Bolt. Destroy a minion. Costs one less for each minion you control. Super weak. Super duper weak. Not all the way at zero, but like a one. Because if I have seven minions out, this is one. Why would I want that? If I have the more common two to four... Minions on the board as a zoo aggro deck. If I have two to four minions, that's going to make this a four to six mana. Destroy a creature. Why would I want to destroy a creature when I could just pay for a three mana silence and bust through the taunt and kill? So, I don't, I don't think this is playable at all. Reckless Dire Troll. Taunt. Discard your lowest cost card. Oh! We have control. We actually are starting to get some disco control. Ooh, baby. God, I just, ooh, I've been burned, man. I, anytime I see discard, I feel like someone's trying to get me back together with an X or something, you know, where I'm like, no, I've been down that path. It didn't work. I, I respect it, but I don't want to go back there again, right? Like, I see this, and part of my brain's like, oh, man, we could make the discard work. No, no, we've been through this. I'm an adult, okay? What, a 2-6 taunt? Wow, really? Uh The stat line is wholly unremarkable. It's above average. We're discarding a card. Grim Rally. Destroy a friendly minion. Give your minions plus one, plus one. Uh, is this... How many good eggs are there? I think there's some good eggs in this game. I kind of think this is good. I kind of think this is good, right? If we have some sort of clone Aroni cards, but we have to be really careful because we have to have enough clone Aroni cards. Because, like, take for instance, Dark Pact, which is exactly what we use. Nope, we're not going to eat dad's stuff. Dark Pact destroys a minion and gives us health, and it's used in a combo -y way. We have the. No. We have the cube, and the cube eats a Doom Guard. And then we can wait around for that to happen. The Doom Guard comes out, eat, blow up with Dark Pact, blast in, right? Because that deck is a more controlly slow deck, the Q block is, it makes sense to get a lot of these pieces together. We don't have to have huge numbers of things. We don't have to have huge numbers of targets for the Dark Packs for it to work. Now, if we're an aggro deck, it actually takes us quite a bit longer to, or uh, it's quite a bit harder to get combos going. So we'd need to have a lot of targets for Grim Rally to actually function. Yeah, you're a happy cat. Yeah, Despy loves Twitch Prime. Yeah, good cat. I'm going to kiss you. Mm. Yeah, I kissed you because I'm dead. All right, Shriek. Discard your lowest cost card. Deal two damage to all minions. What? Is uh, zero? Zero, right? Maybe? Why would I want anti-card advantage? Well, how is this card good at all? I'm confused. Why is this a good card? I think the card's bad. I wouldn't run it. Oh, you're a good cat. Yeah. Oh, God, she's so happy. <sighs> I do not understand, man. Dude, you're di you have to discard a card. Oh my god, what discard synergy? What am I going to discard the knight so the knight gets played or the silver war golem and then I like deal damage or everything? Like, uh, what? Shriek seems. It's your lowest cost card. Then why am I putting them in my deck if I, unless they're good? Like, 
I think the only way it makes sense is if we, this is just for Zavas, right? We just Zavas. I think this card is zero, like complete badness. Spirit of the Bat. For one turn, after a friendly minion dies, give a minion in your hand plus one, plus one. Um. Um. This seems plausible. God, I feel like a supervillain. I'm a supervillain, and you're my cat. We're going to take over the whole world. Yeah, you and me, we're going to be bad. We're going to kill everyone to the left. They're all gone. Everyone to the right gets to live. Doesn't make any sense. It's our evil little plan, you and me. Yeah, I love you too. Okay. Um, I love this cat's just literally staring straight at me. It's so great. Oh, looking away now. Okay. Um, the reason I think this is plausible... No, this is so weird and bad. Why would I not just want to run like a... 3-2 or a 2-2 or something. That's a good cat. Yeah, tummy time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What is this going to do? What is this going to do? Like, we, we have a bunch of small creatures out. Like, here... I can imagine Spirit of the Bat being some super sick. We play it when we have five dudes out and we throw them all into something and give something in our hand plus five, plus five, but it's hand buffy. If it was give a minion in your hand plus two, plus two, mm, we can like run Defiler, Defile in our own zoo decks and just blow this up. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I think that card's bad. Void Contract. Destroy half of each player's deck. Now there is a meme. There is a May May. Now, is this destroy half the remaining cards in the deck, or is this just take 15 of those 30 starting cards and blow them up? I don't even know what it is. Remaining. Ah. I know I could, like, draw my whole deck and then just blow up a bunch of theirs. Yeah, why not, man? Void Contract's hilarious. I'm going to put it in the deck. Soul Warden had three random cards. You discarded this game to your hand. Mm -mm. You're not going to get me to say it's good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is such an optical illusion. This is such an optical illusion, okay? Think about this. You delete three cards, and then you undelete them. And therefore, Soul Warden is a vanilla 6-6. Six, six. And if you didn't draw her, you just deleted three cards. Hmm-mm. Hmm-mm. No. But what about the value of the cards I died, that I played earlier? How many get the discarded cards back cards are there in this game? her but Sean the value there is no value you lose value when you discard and you're getting the same value you just chucked away back again that's like if I lent you a dollar when you give it back I said I made a dollar today I didn't it's the same dollar okay you can't tell me that I'm getting value back you're such a liar it's a loan you're loaning the cards back and at 0% interest, it gets paid back, okay? Now, the initial cards that discarded, they're a little upstatted. They're a little good, aren't they? Yeah, unless they discard a Soul Warden, or unless you don't draw a Soul Warden, this card is the biggest tease in the set. You know what? My answer is that I hate Soul Warden. It's not that I think it's a bad card, it's that I hate it. I hate that this card is existing in this game right now. This is, you're a shitty card. I hate this card, I can't believe this. Oh my god, you're just gonna give me the discarded cards back and convince me to get back together with that Lakari sacrifice? Unbelievable. Put Lakari sacrifice in your deck, lose a game, man. Let's see what else is here. High Priest. Jack like 
Taunt Lifesteal. When you discard this, add two copies of it to your hand. <laughs> not going to do it. That is not interesting to me. It's a four mana, three, four. We've been shitting on three mana, three, fours all day. You think it's going to stop now that it's four mana? Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. But what if you discard it? You discard this, and then you and then you get to put it back into the hand, and then you get more, and you get to put it back. Then you know what? Congratulations on being able to play two three fours with taunt each turn in your one percent case of the games that gets that far, because you've lost ninety nine percent of them at this point. Mm -mm. Nope. Super no. Not a chance. Oh my god, and it life steals too. Mm -mm. I'm not going to do it, okay? You're not going to get me to say the discarding is good. Let's see. Let's see what great discard activators we get right now. Oh, this 2 6 with taunt. Isn't that an amazing discard activator, okay? Get out of here. Lifesteal is actually really important in discard decks because you spend so much time hero powering because you don't have any fucking cards, okay? So that is that is a reasonable reason to say we should use the High Priestess Jekyllick because if you don't have any cards, you got a hero power, you lose the health, she gets the health back if you've discarded her at the time. This card sucks. This card sucks. This card, they're all bad, and I hate them. Hyreek the Bat! Hyreek! Hyreek! Hyreek the Bat. Or is it her eek? I am the bat. Her eek. Like a malfunctioning robot. Her eek. Battle cry. Fill your board with copies of this minion. Because there's a few cards that buff things in the hand. Now this is good because if you included this and you discarded it, you wouldn't feel that sad. <laughs> hey! Nah, this, this is a big old no-no. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I, this is the best card here. I think Warlock kind of got shafted this expansion. Oh my god. Reckless Dire Troll. You know what's, you know what's the shittiest thing of all? I am gonna try to make a discard warlock work. I'm gonna try. Because I like the idea of discarding. I love the aesthetic of sacrifice to get great benefits. And I hope to God when I hit rank 25, everyone here is just sort of like kicking dirt in the ground, looking at their shoes. I, I don't know. I don't know why I thought it would have been good. It's never been good. I don't know why I thought it would be. Devastate. Deal four damage to a damaged minion. What? I really feel like the name of this card expresses exactly how I feel right now. Is this actually good? Like, why would I want to run this instead of like a, like a Serenite Reaper? Odd Warrior Execute? That is a good point, Fenary. It's, this seems fine. It's fine. Is it good? Fine. Yeah, no, I, 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 this is this is like niche. This is so niche. Dragon Roar. Add two random dragons to your hand. <laughs> add one enforced archetype to your class. Um, I think two random dragons to your hand. I historically I like cards that snatch cards out of the ether instead of from the deck. So I think Dragon Roar is. Fine. It's fine. Overlord's Whip. After you play a minion, deal one damage to it. Huh. What? Here's the thing. There's been so many things that are like hurting myself to do stuff, and there's such small use cases for that like uh, an acolyte of pain cool armorsmith great 
Garrosh Hellscream. Okay. Anything else? Am I missing anything? It's a 2 4. I guess that's a reasonable stat line. Amani? No, Amani. The text in Amani does imply that it wishes to be damaged, but I, I don't know of like successful Amani decks in Warriors that I'm looking at this and going like, oh my god, the Overlord's whips. You cannot play the Amani on turn two. You wait till turn four after you've played the whip. Oh. Um, Enrage has been a completely underwhelming mechanic. So I think that Overlord's Whip, in terms of the Enrage text on here, 2-4 uh, uh, though. I, weirdly, I feel like this might have potential because being able to pop a bunch of two health or lower things could, could actually be kind of good. Hmm. Ember Scale Drake. Yeah, no, I, I just think this, this feels nah. Google Slides? Oh, hell yeah, man. Ember Scale Drake. If you're holding a dragon, gain five armor. I think actually interesting. I think actually interesting. Um, five mana, five, five, that also gets five armor seems just like a nice package. Shield Maiden was pretty great. Um, Ember Scale Drake, I think, is just pretty great. I think it's, this is a solid. Again, this is like one of those three cards. Right? It's not like a four, four out of four. This is like a three out of four. This is like definitely above average. I really like Ember Scale Drake. Heavy Metal. Summon a random minion with cost equal to your armor up to ten. I guess. I guess. There's like the even Recruit Warrior, and this fits into there as a different alternative to gather your party. No, actually, this works in Even Warrior. I think this works in Even Warrior. I weirdly played a lot of Even Warrior. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think this makes sense. If you're in a big Even Warrior, you are in a little bit of pain around six mana, wishing to be able to do stuff. Um, you already already run Geo uh, Sculper Yip in that deck. I think this has uses, but this is niche. This is a two. Spear of the Rhino, stealth for one turn. Your rush minions are immune the turn they're summoned. This isn't discover, it's random. I know, Khufu. I know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying what I'm saying is you get to turn six and you want to get a big thing out, and there's only two copies of a six mana card, which is two gather your parties. So this goes to four. This goes to four copies because you can run these two things. It's a way to, in a slower game, have a play on turn six. Even though this is random, which is fine. So this, your rush minions are immune this turn. Um, Two fish two, you you hit the nail on the head. This feels clunky. This feels really awkward because this is a rush minion, not a minion with rush, so it doesn't actually have synergy with Doctor Boom. Uh, I believe because I believe that the way Doctor Boom works is that your mech minions receive rush once they are played, but they are not a rush minion. In the same way that if you have a death rattle card that is silenced, it is still a death rattle minion. I, I, I actually have no idea. I, I'm 90 percent certain that won't work. By the way, Kufu, I feel bad that I was snippy with you. Forgive me, Kufu. Um, yeah, the, the the real problem I have with so many cards in deck evaluation is that yeah, this is a one mana zero three. But why would I want to give it a whole slot? Why would I give it a whole slot? Smolder Thorn Lancer. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a damaged enemy minion. Fucking cool. Oh, cool. It's another execute. 
Oh, my lordy lord. Three mana execute with a body, yes. So three mana execute with a 3-2 behind it. Wow, dragons. We could be a control deck with dragon. Wow. So I guess Odd Warrior now is going to be running a dragon package. Because the other dragon was also odd. Soul Thrays. <laughs> oh, is this actually pronounced Soul Thrays? Oh my god. That, that noise is so funny. Is it Soul Thras? How is this pronounced? It's an OG WoW weapon. I, I mean, it just makes me chuckle. Solthrays! Solthrays sounds like... It, it almost sounds like one of those uh, infomercial products that you can get to do a really specific type of cooking instead of using a griddle. Get the Solthrays and your chicken will turn out great in five minutes. Uh, overkill, you may attack again. It's six mana, but it's four... No. It's a worse fool's bane, isn't it? Now here's an interesting question. Hmm. No, 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 no. No, 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 The The overkill is... what's distracting here. This is, this is two true silver champions, right? I actually think this is a legitimately strong card. I think it's a legitimately strong card. A 4-4 four, four weapon. A vanilla 4-4 four, four weapon. Why not play Arcanite? Arcanite's a 5-2. It only gets two strikes. So this, this actually seems incredibly important to Warrior. This is really nice. Yeah, I really like this card. I'm going to give this actually a four. I seriously, I'm going to give this an exceptional rating. I think this is absolutely exceptional. Compared to Gorehowl, um, Yeah, I like the flexibility of this one in contrast to Gorehowl. War Master Voon. Copy all dragons in your hand. Okay. Um. It seems. Okay. Seems okay. We still have to cast all those dragons. So this is another card advantage thing. So if we're going a little late, we maybe have three nice dragons, we can copy them. That seems pretty cool. This seems okay. Akali the Rhino. Rush, overkill, draw, rush minion from your deck. Give it plus five, plus five. What? Isn't this ridiculous? Like, think about this. This can be a board sweep that leaves you with a board. Right? Because, like, you play a Kali. They, let's say they have two or three things out. You play a Kali. You pop one. It brings out, like, the 2-5 rusher is now a 7-10 rusher. And then pop with that. I gotta, I gotta just take a look at boards on turn 7, 8, 9, 10 plus. Oh, draw a rush minion from your deck? Oh, dude, I don't know how to fucking read. Oh, that's the, one of my biggest weaknesses is reading. I glaze over thing. Kind of the way I do with donuts. Um, and as it turns out, that says draw. I'm sorry. Akali the Rhino is... I think, I think this is zero. I think this is not good. I I I think this is not good. I also want a donut. Oh my god, we're on to the neutrals. We've got ourselves about 30 minutes left of this. Rush taunt 5-7. Amani Warbear. He's like, ah, play me in arena. He's even in an arena in the background. Uh mediocre card. Will not see play in any constructed. 
Arena Fanatic, give all minions in your hand plus one, plus one. <laughs> uh, I Is this an Arena card? I can't tell. Uh, no, this is, this is actually an unplayable card. I think it's a zero. I think that was your Arena Treasure Chest. Death Rattle, draw two cards. Um... No. No. Banana Buffoon, add two bananas to your hand. No. No. I don't think so, no. Nope. No. Why do we want more bananas? Is there some sort of weird Pyromancer deck going on? Maybe we put in Banana Buffoons to get some banana generation? Maybe that's what we do? But uh, I don't want this Banana Buffoon anywhere near me. Technically, this can function like a, th a slow 4-4. Four, four. You play it for three, but then you cast the bananas on it, and you've only spent one card to make a 4-4. Four, four. Pretty weak. Cheaty Ankle Biter. Lifesteal. Battle Cry. Deal one damage. This card is interesting. This is some fascinating technology being printed on this card. Because this is the anti-aggro in very particular circumstances. If you're up against a lot of aggro decks that have 1-1s, 2-1s, 3-1s, you play a cheaty ankle biter to eat one and then trade for one. This this is a really, really cool card. And this is a very cleverly designed card too. Dozing Marksman has plus four attack while damaged. First of all, why do you think the enraged keyword is gone? Why is the enraged keyword in some places and not in other places? Enraged was confusing. I can actually see that. Okay, that actually makes sense to me. Uh, I That actually makes a ton of sense to me. Um, why people would find that confusing, the enrage keyword. Okay, so it's plus four attack while damaged. Um, okay. I mean, a, a zero four that becomes a four three at best for two. Do here's the thing: dozing marksman needs a lot of work to actually become powerful. Because if you think of what's one card that can enable it, you need to say to yourself, "How do I get like eight of that card in my deck?" Because if I'm playing a dozing marksman, then I need to be able to always hit it every single time. Um, so th this actually seems more than anything like a zoo card, like a zoo that does some sort of weird buffing, has direwolf alphas next to it, things like that. Um, I'd say this seems plausible because it's a two mana card. It's plausible. I think it's going to be tough to make it work though. So I'm going to give it like a two. Dragon Moss Scorcher, deal one damage to all other minions. Interesting stat line. <laughs> Who hates paladins? Um, God, that is a weird stat line. It just seems so weird. I think it's just not going to be run. I, I, It's hard for me to think of the use case for it. Um, I guess if you really hate Paladins, you run it in that. But outside of that, no. Former champ. Battle cry. Summon a 1-1 one, one hotshot. Arena. Arena. Eh? Eh? It's Arena? Got an Arena? Huh? Eh? Kurabashi Chicken. Overkill. Gain plus 5 attack. Ha! Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. All right, great. Half time, scavenger, stealth, overkill, gain three armor. 
Oh, now that is an interesting card. Because it can always set up its ability to gain three armor, so it's kind of like a larger plated beetle. Very good in arena. I think plated beetle's still better. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Helpless Hatchling. Reduce the cost of a beast in your hand by one. Okay. This might be terrible, but I'm always looking for one drops if I'm a hunter. Cost one, one mana beast. Reduces the cost of beasts. It's terrible in all circumstances, except it could be good in Hunter. That's it. It's the only one. Mashog Enforcer. Taunt. Divine Shield. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Let me, let me do my blunt inner fire priest, shall we? I mean, I don't think this card's actually good. This stat line is the funniest thing. A 214. Please. I mean, it's probably appallingly bad, but that's so good. That's, that amuses me so much. I'm giving this one a four. Here's, here's the world winner of the set is the Moshog Enforcer. Ornery Tortoise. Never mind, we found our new five. It's a three mana, three five battle cry. Deal five damage to your hero. I mean, Pit Lord is four mana to deal five damage, and that's a five six. Nobody runs that card. God, I hate turtles. Now nah, I'm giving it the big old Zipperino Super Nope. Um, the only deck in which uh, Ornery Tortoise makes sense is. Zoo. Maybe actually Aggro Priest, though. Isn't that an interesting one? Run that in Aggro Priest. Oh, it's a beast. Maybe a Face Hunter. Maybe a Thunter. I don't actually know what this tortoise is. Sure is ornery, though. God, what a weird... <laughs> yeah... Zero. We're hitting it. We're giving it a hard zero. That card's not good. Rabble Bouncer. Taunt. Costs one less for each enemy minion. Ooh, I I don't like this card. This is way too circumstantial. And for two power, like if you're getting Zerg down and you want to try to plant a wall, a seven mana two seven, like the downside is way, way too much of a downside. Um God, that's way, way, way too much of a downside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. that That's the biggest reason I hate this. It's like in a control versus control, I throw down a 7 mana 2 7. Yuck. We're generating Thug. At the start of your turn, restore 2 health to this minion. Interesting card. Very interesting. Arena card. Too much hard removal sweeping that goes on in um, Constructed to actually make it viable. Rumble Tusk Shaker. Death Rattle. Summon a 3-2 Rumble Tusk Breaker. <laughs> um, it, it, this is a baby piloted shredder. Look at this art. This reminds me so much of Grim Fandango. Um... I feel like, like, intuitively this card seems bad, but it's so similar in stat line to a piloted shredder. Like, so similar. The fact that you're guaranteed a 3-2 on the death rattle is more beneficial than the weaker things. Actually, this card's fine. 
This is a fine card. Definitely nice in arena, but it seems fine. Serenite Taskmaster. Summon a 0-3 free agent with taunt for your opponent. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Interesting card. The uh, zombie, zombie chow, the 2-3 for one mana was a really exceptional anti-aggro card. So I wonder if Serenite Taskmaster is leaning in this direction. Trying to punch through an 0-3 is really tough. Because, um, I mean, you can really fuck yourself over against an aggro deck, giving them a 0-3 taunt, and then you can't punch through that taunt for a turn, and then they, like, fill their board with a whole bunch of stuff. Um... I actually, I'm, I'm feeling this card. I'm feeling this card. A one mana two three is a really specifically valuable stat line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a three. I'm gonna give this a three. This is nice. Scarab eggs. Summon three one one scarabs. Perfect zoo card. Perfect zoo in the devouring circumstance. I like this card a whole bunch. A whole bunch. Hell, even Zoo with a uh, Knife Juggler might make a return. The reason I like this a lot is that there was those cards that would permit the sacrificing of specific things. So we have the Devil Sore Eggs, we have the Scarab Eggs. We need a few extra enablers to make sure we're not too passive. Um, we also have the Reveler, Sanguine Reveler, the one mana that you eat a thing. Uh, we have the Hungry Pterodax. I actually think that there's an Egg Zoo Gobbler deck that makes a ton of sense here. <laughs> what if you could discard this? Ah, there's your value. Sharkfin Fan, after hero attacks, summon a 1-1 one, one Pirate. Oh, that seems like a very good Pirate. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Do we have an even pirate rogue? <sighs> Repeat after me. Pirate rogue is not a thing. Uh, this card, this card's good though. The the risk of infinite value is always good. Sightless ranger rush summon two one one bats. <laughs> this guy is such a rejected superhero. Look at him. He doesn't know whether to cover up or show off some skin. We get some calf, but we can't even see a single thing on the face. Sightless Ranger. All right. Summon two one one bats. I'm not really feeling this. I was really into the five mana rush creatures for Paladin for a while, and increasingly I'm like not... Nah. Spell Zerker has spell damage plus two while damaged. Weird. Weird. Does this work in Aggro Mage? The fact that this is two is relevant. A two mana, two three. Yeah, you don't really need a lot of spell damage in the aggro mages. All right, zero. Oh. Ticket scalper. Overkill. Draw two cards. No. Because you play it, they kill it, and then it's dead. Zero. 100%. Overkill doesn't work the other way. You have to be the uh, initiator of the attack. Arena patron. Summon another arena patron. No. No. Um, oh, all overkill cards suffer from the problem that when you play them, you have to wait a turn to then be able to attack with them so that, you, that way you can trigger the overkill. Um, so because they all have that problem, they're all quite weak. As, as a baseline, overkill is a very conditional mechanic, so they have to be quite amazing with the overkill effect for me to get excited. 
Belligerent Gnome, Taunt, Battlecry. If your opponent has two or more minions, gain plus one attack. It's two mana, two four with Taunt. So situational, but this is a tech card. This is like, I have a control deck with 25 cards in it. The, the meta is crazy aggro. I'm going to put in some Belligerent Gnomes. So, um... But even then, it's... Uh, Booty Bay Bookie. Give your opponent a coin. Fascinating little card. Things like these always pique my interest because it's an above average stat line. Um, giving your opponent a coin is quite a hell of a thing. Would I rather have a coin or would I rather have a 3 3? I feel like I'd rather have a coin. So I feel like someone's going to be able to do something with this, but um, it, it's at best it's a 3-3, which again I'm not over the moon about. Fire Tree Witch Doctor, Battle Cry. If you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. Now that is an interesting card. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this is good, man. The discover a spell things... discover a spell because you're only getting spells from your class i mean like if you are a mage deck this is an extra primordial glyph with a body um i think this card's very very powerful whoa lordy and it's a two two don't know about this for constructed Ooh, i think it's a real constructo constructo guy death rattle draw two murlocs from your deck murloc tasty fin this art is insane Oh my god, I am creeped out. That is like right on the uncanny valley for me. Whoa! Holy shit, that is... Um, I think the effect is okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I, I don't I'm just doing out of this. Okay, Serpent Ward. Oh my god, I, I'm, I'm not even joking, man. That like viscerally unsettles me, so I'm never even playing with that card. I can't even look at it. It's so gross. Serpent Ward, at the end of your turn, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Oh. Cool. I love the idea of little things are just ping in the face. It's a neutral totem. This is an interesting card. Um... This might be plausibly good. This might actually be plausibly good. It dies super easily at two ugh, healths. But I mean it's kinda like a it's kinda like a spell. Shoot the face for two. I don't know. I don't know. This is interesting. This this is like a two. This has a niche use. This has a niche use. Shield breaker. Silence an enemy minion with taunt. Ah oh, fuck! Oh, come on. Oh, no. Oh, my God. What a painful card to see. Oh, I want to do a control paladin. Oh. 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 Oh, Jesus. All right, this is a four. This is an amazing card. Four out of four. Oh, my God. You there, stop having fun! <laughs> no, I have so much fun with Control Deck! Just look at the size of that hammer just getting stamped down on my nose. Yeah, I mean, that's just an exceptional card. Whenever you restore three or more health to your hero, draw a card. No? No? No, 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 no. Would I rather run this or a Novice Engineer? I think I'd rather run a Novice Engineer. I think it's no. I think it's a zero. I think it's a nope out of nope for me. No. It's worse than a novice engineer as far as I can tell. What a boy. Your next hero power this turn costs zero. OTK Paladin, huh? OTK Paladin? OTK Paladin, right? 
No, because this costs two mana. Boy, I'm a real fucking dumb guy. Ah, why am I such a dumb guy? Ah, balls. Yeah, no, no. What is this? What does this permit me to do, huh? 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 Crow Roaster. If you're holding a dragon, deal seven damage to an enemy minion. So big. This is perfect for an odd dragon warrior that's already having some struggles with single target removal due to the lack of execute. Pop a crowd roaster in there, get me some other dragons killing some damaged minions and kabadoom. My god, look at the size of this big game hunter, the size and the flexibility of it. I like this, but this is a three because its stat line sucks. Still a three out of four. Drakari Trickster, give each player a copy of a random minion from their opponent's deck. Why? Gurubashi Offering, at the start of your turn, destroy this and gain 08 armor. Bad, right? I think I... I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. I, th I think I got it. I think this. I think this is not the card you put into a deck if you're in the mood for winning. If you like stars, dust this. Yeah, because I mean, it's an O2. So a lot of the times against aggro decks, your opponent kills it. So you've essentially healed for two. This is a one mana heal for two, right? If your if your opponent has minions, they kill this. All right, Ice Cream Peddler, Battle Cry. If you control a frozen minion, gain eight armor. Ah, <laughs> uh, let, um... I mean, you can Blizzard an Ice Cream Peddle and gain eight armor. <laughs> I mean, there's an argument to be made here. There is an argument to be made. How isn't this amazing? This is one of the first cards that all of you think is a snap zero and I don't. I think this is like a one, maybe a two, because I want to heal armor in a in my mage deck. Oh, if you control a frozen minion, gain eight armor? Wait a minute. Why was this printed? Wait a minute. First of all. Reading is still one of, like a real uh, gap in my knowledge. But second of all, th like this doesn't make any sense to me. Like I don't get this. Like if I am an aggro deck and a mage blizzards me, I can counter that by gaining eight armor with an ice cream peddler. Like, I don't even understand the story. What's the story that I am trying to achieve with the ice cream peddler? Is this freeze shamans after freeze their own shit for so many turns that we at least should give them a way to gain armor? And maybe other classes could use it. Like, I, like, I really, like, I... So, so there's two types of comprehension that exist. The first is, can I read what's on the card and understand the text? Which you see me struggle with. But but take this. I can read, I know it's a one man, it's a zero two, I get what that means. At the start of your turn, destroy this and gain eight armor. Right? That's one type of comprehension. Can I comprehend the English language that's there? There's a second type of comprehension, which is like, do I understand why this thing even exists? Like, now that I understand the card text, I'm more confused than I was before I began to read, right? 
now that I've read, like, because my brain filled in the, the gaps, right? There's no way it could be just my minions. Why is this ice cream peddler there? I don't even know. Overkill, double this minion's attack. Oh, that's that's a great name, Linecracker. Um, good Narina has some merit, as this this actually has the property that a lot of other large creatures lack, in that this feels like an imminent danger that's going to spiral out of control. The 10 the ten health is quite a lot. Quite a lot. It just still does not seem that good and constructed. Like, if I could run this or a Lich King, I'd run the Lich King because i play the Lich King and immediately get a card dumped into my hand. Masked Contender, Battle Cry. If you control a secret, play a secret from your deck. No! I thought we... I thought we were over this. Oh, that's actually kind of interesting. Do you know it's interesting? Did you know that rogues have secrets? Who am I? None of your business. I actually don't think this is that great. Um, I don't really think it's that great. I mean, maybe in an aggro mage, but I don't really think it's that great. Mashog announcer. Enemies attacking this have a 50% chance to attack someone else. Oh, that's hilarious. But weak. It's a 6-5 five for 5 that's vanilla. It's hilarious, but meh. Snapjaw shell fighter. Whenever an adjacent minion takes a damage, this minion takes it instead. Oh. I think that there's a two somewhere in here. Like this next to Zillabong. What's the, what's the one three shaman legendary that clones abilities? Zilladong, Zillamon, Zillamon? Zentimo, ah, Zentimo. Wow, we were really off. Um, put a Snapjaw shell fighter next to a Zentimo and then um, Hold the power button on your computer because you've been putting a Snapjaw Shell Fighter into your control shaman. All right, that's a, that's a zero. Untamed Beastmaster. Whenever you draw a beast, give it plus two, plus two. What? Wait, really? This might be viable. Wow. Yeah, I actually think this is a thing. Oh, this is a thing. This is a thing right here. This actually seems okay. Because it gets the stats and you just play it. And it's a 3 mana 3-4. Three, I like 3 mana 3-4s. You've been hearing that all show long. I think this is a 3. I'm going to give it a 3. Da Undertaker. Battle Cry. Gain the death rattle effects of 3 friendly minions that died this game. Oh, it's an 8-5, isn't it? Um. Oh my god, is that good in the Paladin deck. Oh. Oh yeah, that's good in the Paladin deck with the little guy that shuffles itself back in. Oh man, yeah, hoot hoot. Yeah, no, this guy's gonna get hooted so hard. Oh man, I wish a new Barak was still in there. Immortal Prelate. Yeah, you get an Immortal Prelate, the one three that shuffles itself in. Get the Undertaker to clone on that. Get the Undertaker to get shuffled back in. I think this is just a strong card just at a pure value. It's just a pure value card. Um, it can get silenced, and that sucks. It's an A5. It's a mediocre stat line. I think the Undertaker is good. I'd give it, I'm, I'm going to give it a 4. I'm going to give it a wholesome 4. Grifta. Battle Cry, discover two cards. Give one, of, give one to your opponent at random. Hakar, the Soul Flare. I think that card's a zero. Um, Death Rattle. Shuffle a Corrupted Blood into each player's deck. Cast when drawn. Take three damage. After you draw, shuffle two copies of this back into your deck. 
This is kind of cool. Inconsistent, because if you treat this as a win condition, treat this as a win condition. Um, let's say you're up against a deck that's drawing through a lot of their deck really quickly. You can dump a Hakar the Soul Flayer in there and they just wind up burning themselves through it. But it's so hard to cast a 10 mana card. A 2. A 2 or a 1. 10 mana cards are just so bad because when you play it, you are sacrificing any impact on the board this turn, which is so dangerous. I really want to cast it on a Togwoggle Druid just to stick it in them. Urgh. This is a fork, by the way. Just, ugh, the fork. Mojo Master Z. Set each player to five mana crystals. You mean, I guess anti mechathim anti druid, boy, that's an interesting card. That's a really cute design. This card kills ramp druid. Well, it kind of punches him a little bit. I think this is a three. I think this is an above average card. I'm not blown away by it, but like I can see its clear uses. It's pretty nice. Undasta, rush, overkill, summon a beast from your hand. Hmm. Huh. I do like that card. I do like that card. I do like that card. I like, hell, I liked Ice Howl anyways. Um, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. This this is like a ramp beast druid, something like that. Are there that many good big beasts, though? Well, even if it's a mediocre beast. I'm killing a thing, I'm having a thing, and I'm summoning a third thing. That's the one, two, three thing punch. Is that it? Oh my god, you guys, we did it. We reviewed the entire set. Those are my thoughts, okay?